What's up guys? It's yo boy Omni Sensei. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn as Goku, Ascending to Godhood, Part 2. Like, share, and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story, link in the description. With all that out of the way, enjoy. In an abandoned basement, a tall lanky man was dragging a short stubby older gentleman through his arms. Why are you doing this? Goku will come and get you you saw how strong he is. When Goku's name was mentioned, the lanky man shivered from the horror that name brings. I I I didn't mean for this to happen. That monster was too powerful. Why you? Say that he will come for me and kill me when he sees that I have a hold of you. But he will already come for me after what I already did. So instead of you being another cause for him to kill me, you are now a chance for me to live as long as I have you hostage, you bastard. You will not get away with this. My daughter and Goku will remember me. And you will suffer a horrible death. Meanwhile, back to the dragon crew. I can't help but feel like I am missing something. Goku looked around to make sure everything is accounted for. He couldn't shake the uneasy feeling, but chalked it up to the threats that he still feels unprepared for. Everyone climbed back onto the plane, while Chichi and hopped on with Goku to make more space on the plane. Traveling for a couple of hours was mind-numbing, to say the least, in the airplane. At least for with Chichi with Goku, there was more space. But Yamcha couldn't help but whistle in a tune in defiance to the awkward silence. Finally landing next to an elongated line leading into a building, the entire crew milled out of the aircraft. Soon after they arrived, a strange-looking spirit passes next to them. Are you all here together for the forewoon of the Fortunate Alibaba? Yes, ma'am. Uh, sir. Oops. Uh, person. Shit ghost. Laughing quite creepily, the wisp didn't respond to Bulma's blunder, and just told the crew to stay in line and wait. All the people in the line were exaggeratedly muscular with intimidating gazes etched across their brow. They looked like trained bodybuilders the way they started to flex their muscles when new arrivals came in. What's with all these muscular guys waiting in line? Are you sure this isn't a bodybuilding gym or something, and not a fortunatling shop? Yeah, everyone here is like muscular peacocks ready to show their muscles on a moment's notice. Krillin and Yamcha felt like they were waiting in the line of the World Martial Arts Tournament, just by feeling the heavy pressure that was asserted by the people in front of them. Before they could indulge in their worries more, a rich-looking couple walked out of the house looking quite smug and happy. So that's where I left my solid gold, diamond and brewer Gucci purse, with a Belle Delphine engravings on it. I might have just killed myself if I couldn't find my ancestral heirloom. Let alone what our friends would have done if they found out we lost it. I know right. They would have ghosted us and called us fake. My reputation would not be able to stand it. The couple laughed at their fortune for knowing a fortune at and left to find their family heirloom. I don't know, those people don't seem like fighters to me. Although I do question their sanity. Everyone couldn't have agreed more, even Roshi and Oolong would not refute that fact. Alright, next in line. The soft whispers of the wisp entered everyone's ears, telling the next group to come. The soft voice was instantly drowned out by the vigorous yelling that the fighters in the front were proclaiming. No sooner than five minutes, they walked back out looking like they were involved in a brutal murder scene. No one was spared as they all had gauzes or canes to help them with their injuries, as they left the house with an extreme look of injustice. Everyone in the crew started to sweat profusely, instantly regretting their life choices. Oolong even started to pee in his pants, but no one really noticed it with the grotesque amount of sweat he leaked out. Next. The previous soft voice now sounded like a voice from hell that was calling upon their doom to enter hell. Everyone's legs were stiff, scared to move one more step, thinking that they were going to though the gauntlet and wind beat up like those that came before. Of course, the only ones that were more nonchalant were Master Roshi and Goku. They nodded to each other before dragging the rest towards the entrance. They soon were presented before an old granny levitating on a crystal orb. The instant that they had eye contact with each other, Rushi and Baba could be seen having sparks flying through the air like they were tangible. Brother, I see that you are still the old bag of bones of perverseness incarnate. Rushi, to prove her point, was staring at the bottom of the blue launch that accompanied them halfway through the journey to Baba's shop. Looking back at her and her establishment, he instantly fired back. 
You are still the old hag that will haggle people of their money with your greed. The sibling relationship was as great as one could hope for. Alright lust and greed, enough of your antics. Can we go back to the matter at hand? Locating an object. Goku's words awoke everyone from their fear. They felt quite ashamed that they were showing fear in front of an old granny-like barber but were quite thick-skinned about it. You want me to locate an object? 10 million zini up front. 10 million. Everyone jumped in fright at the price tag that was offered. Everyone except Bomber of course. I can pay for it. But how do I know that you are real and not a scam? Jam PH, doubting my abilities in my own establishment. If you're rich just test me then. Bomber's skeptical nature towards the mystical arts got the better of her. She reached into her back pocket to grab her wallet. Inside it, she took out a silver card and gave it to the floating granny. Sorry, I don't accept card. Only cash. Barbara was rubbing her two fingers in a money-grubbing motion. Grumbling, Bomba rang up her household so that her dad could deliver money to her. Rang after rang, Bomba suddenly remembered something. Her face instantly transformed into one of shock and disbelief. Goku, I just remembered my father. Did you see him? It was Goku's turn to feel regret and shame. He was so focused on the timeline that he completely forgot the changes that he made. In fact, he didn't even check who he killed in the buildings. We need to go back and check. He probably was sent to a special facility because of his status. So he has a high chance of being alive. Looks like we will have to postpone getting the final Dragon Ball. Not necessarily. We can split into two teams. One who can get the Dragon Ball and the other to find Dr. Briefs. For all we know, Dr. Briefs might be also in the hands of the person who has the other Dragon Ball. Master Roshi refuted Krillin and suggested going to two teams. But we will waste a lot of time going to get the money needed in the first place. You don't only need money to get clairvoyance reading from me. This time, Baba refuted Chichi's reasonable claim and pursued her own agenda. You will fight against five fighters. If you win all of them, I will give you a reading on what you need. Everyone took her words into consideration and the risk of splitting the team would hold. Goku saw his chance to redeem himself. I will stay and fight alone. You guys are going to need all the eyes and fighters you need in case the enemy is stronger than expected. On the other hand, could fail and still try again later or pay later. Are you sure you can do this? I doubt that this will be a walk in the park. Goku himself is enough. I will stay and help him. Oolong voiced his concern, but Rushi again voiced his opinion. Everyone looked at Rushi in surprise, including Baba. She was having an increasing interest in the young man before her. A hey, all right, we will go our separate ways. Good luck, Goku. Everyone said goodbye to Goku and Roshi and left in their airplane. Baba led the Turtle Hermit practitioners to the stadium to face his new adversaries. Fall into the lake and you lose. Since it is you by yourself, you will face opponent after opponent until you drop or die. You don't have any confidence that I will win. Nope. She popped the pee in an aggravating manner to really show her stance. She called up her first fighter to the stadium by the name of Dracula Man. A bat flew into the stadium from the castle. He then transformed into a very skinny man with boxing gloves and sharp teeth. His bones that show and pale skin made one skin crawl just by looking at him. Battle begin. Goku, Dracula Man could transform into a bat, increasing his speed, and can suck your blood. Roshi was giving Goku advice so he wouldn't get blindsided. After all, this was a 5v1, so it was only fair. Goku got into an aggressive stance, and threw a flurry of punches towards Dracula Man. As if the boxing gloves were just decoration, Dracula Man only dodged. Soon enough, he couldn't take the pressure anymore. Once he saw an opening, he retreated and turned back into a bat. With his enhanced speed, he flew circles around Goku who was trying to keep track of him. Dracula then appeared behind Goku, with his mouth wide open and ready to suck some delicious blood. Just as Dracula clamped down, the figure of Goku faded out of existence. The forcefulness of Dracula's chomp came back to bite him as his teeth vibrated from the harsh impact. Goku took this chance and swung behind him to launch a fist to Dracula's head. Dracula flipped a few times before landing on the lake face first. Next, Goku felt the impatience well inside him. He really wanted help in the search to find Dr. Briefs, and he felt like it was his responsibility to take care of him. Baba only snorted at Goku's arrogant attitude. Let's see him keep that attitude at the last fight. Calling in the next fighter, Goku could only hear footsteps approach him 
and it came to a sudden stop a short space in front of him. Battle begin. Goku, this is the invisible man. Don't rely on your sight as you fight him. Knowing that this was another way to hone his senses, Goku closed his eyes. Roshi silently approved Goku's decision to make this fight another way to get stronger. Goku could hear the very soft footsteps of the invisible man as he approached to attack. Each fist sent out followed a small gust of wind that disturbed the air around him. Moving in discretion to these small irregularities, Goku dodged his first punch. Everyone stood still for a second not believing what they were seeing. The invisible man was beat red from the embarrassment that his attack missed not that anyone would know. Invisible man then did a sweet kick followed by another kick toward Goku's sternum. Goku dodged both attacks and sent a fist of his own, landing it squarely on the opponent's chest. Seeing that her fighter is at a disadvantage, Baba started singing. All the class in the vicinity started to break from the horrible singing that was projected from her mouth. What Baba didn't know that Goku wasn't only using sound to perceive the movement of his enemy. He was actually using a form of Kai sensing to see the invisible man. Baba's horrendous voice was shoved in the back of Goku's mind as he jumped and accurately landed a kick right on the invisible man's chest. He flew past the lake and skidded across the dirt. Opening his eyes, he stared straight at Baba with determination in his eyes. Next. This was the first time that Baba truly saw Goku in a different light. Defiant that a soul kid would be able to defeat all her fighters, she quickly ushered him into the second arena. We need to switch arenas for the next fights. To the devil's toilet, follow me. Following Baba down the narrow road to the next building and up the stairs, they eventually came upon an old wooden door with a skull as the handle. Opening the door, a burst of toxic air hit Goku's face like a truck. He walked a couple more steps before he saw light and teeth at the end of the tunnel. He emerged from a devil statue's mouth and stood on his tongue that was elongated to touch another devil's tongue. Both devils were on a toilet with paper in between them. Looking down, he saw an angle of which only those who stood at the platform would see, and couldn't help but pity the devil. Baba took out a juicy piece of steak from seemingly out of nowhere and demonstrated what would happen to someone if they would accidentally fall in. Goku couldn't help but lament for the steak as it sunk into the poisonous water, never to be seen again. Come on in dried up gladiator, mummy. A large man wrapped in bandages came through the devil across from Goku. He had a permanent sneer on his face as he walked along the tongue to face Goku. Battle begin. Ignoring the start of the battle from Baba, Goku threw his trash talk to the opposition immediately, like any other good Samaritan would do when they want to win. Your name is Mummy. Did you like come out wrapped up in bandages or something? Your mom must have an awful naming sense. Said Mummy had a look of confusion than of anger. This is my alias. Alias. How dare you insult my mom? Mummy charged at Goku in a fit of rage, but he was already in a defensive position. Cortex, left bicep, right bicep. Left thigh, right thigh, Mummy's punches were as accurate as they were fast, despite Goku's taunting in the beginning. His burly body coupled with his fast speed was able to cover a lot of ground as he started to do chops towards Goku's head. Goku could feel the wind on his face from Mummy's heavy quick chops. No matter how fast Mummy did his attacks, Goku was able to dodge all of his attacks due to his small size advantage. Going under his lumbering fist, he did an uppercut to Mummy's chest. Mummy was lifted off the ground a couple of inches. Continuing his combo, Goku spun and kicked the side of Mummy while he was in the air. Airborne, Mummy flew back to his devil and crashed on its teeth, producing a few cracks. Mummy leaked a little blood from his mouth for the first time in a long time. He grabbed a loose piece of bandage and wiped the blood away. Both attacks put him in a very dire position physical-wise. His mental state was also in shambles after getting beaten up by a little kid. Goku looked at Mummy after he went back to a fighting position. He glared and exerted all his intimidation pressure onto the poor, beaten-up man. Mummy's eyes suddenly whitened out, and he passed out since all his mental defenses were down. Baba and Roshi were stunned at the spectacle before them. Exerting pressure was no easy task to learn. Mummy nearly fell out of the platform before Goku went up and caught him. He didn't want to see someone die for no reason. Sham PH, you are one hell of a fighter. Get it. Hell in Devil's Toilet. Baba was laughing at her own joke while the next fighter came out. Here comes Devil Man. In comes a man in a literal devil suit. Equipped with horns, wings and a tail. The black-clad man smirked at the little boy confident in his win. Battle begin. Devil Man launched up in the air with a flap of his wings. He smiled at Goku menacingly. 
and went towards Goku with both of his hands in a claw-like fashion. His fingernails were disgustingly sharp and yellow as per usual for devils. Goku knew about Devil Man's special abilities, and didn't have any confidence in defending against it. He had to finish this fast and he had enough power too. Goku, in turn, jumped up towards Devil Man in a counter surprising everyone by his actions. Devil Man though that they would meet in the center with both of their fists, with how Goku also had his fist in the same fashion but instead with closed fists. Just before they clashed, Goku retracted his arms and slipped through Devil Man's arms with his slim body. Before he can defend himself, Goku tilted his head back and ran it back towards Devil Man's head. Thinking quickly, Devil Man leaned his head forward, so that the horns on his heads were in between him and Goku. Although he couldn't get the spiky part to stab Goku because it was too far back, the extra protection gave him more confidence in his defense. His confidence was quickly shattered along with his horns and consciousness, as he blacked out from the extreme pain. Devil Man slammed on the opposition wall with such force you would think something in his head cracked. Goku did not want to leave any variables, so he hit nearly as hard as he could. E Goku has far expanded in strength than I ever realized. Baba and Roshi were stunned silly from the speed and strength that Goku displayed, while Goku exhaled from the light workout he received. By golly, you are one tough cookie. Out came a short man with a very odd mask with some white hairs sticking out. Even though everyone couldn't see his face, they all knew the shocked expression was also coming across his face like it was on theirs. Even if Goku didn't already know who this was, he couldn't mistake that moustache for anything. I highly doubt I would win, but let us go to the other stage. We need an open fight to really test our limits. Somewhere in the middle of nowhere, this is the best. We can learn everything about Goku from the safety of our car. A dog spoke to his companions that were in the car with him in a really loud voice, due to the earphones they had on. What? The girl sitting across the seat from him couldn't hear and scream out like the normal person would do when they can't hear themselves. Scream knowing that you are screaming so that you can hear yourself when you are not supposed to. Soon enough, they started arguing making the blue gremlin in the front of the car very agitated. It became very much a problem. So the leader swiveled his body to tell off his subordinates. Would you two shut up? They immediately shut up not wanting to endure the punishment. However, they then heard a small thud originating from the front seat's floor. Pilaf then saw a shiny orange ball spill out of the box that it was stored in. Panicking, he quickly put it back inside sweating at the implication that it escaped its cage for even a split moment. Baba complied and led everyone back to the original stage. Standing face to face, he couldn't help but think back to the familiar times when they sparred against each other, and the guilt he felt for what he did. They were whispering to each other before the match started. Baba was looking at Goku mischievously, while the stranger showed no emotion through his mask. They both did their bow to honor the other person in this spa, like Goku always did. Definitely, battle begin. Even though they were both standing still, they were both sizing each other up internally. Knowing that Gohan was a defensive fighter, Goku initiated the exchange by speeding over to him. A fist to the face was the starting move, but was easily dodged with a duck. When Gohan ducked, Goku did a quick knee that was blocked by two hands that were connected. Gohan clasped the appendage that was brought to him and threw him to the other side of the ring. Goku did a few flips and landed stably on his feet like a cat. They both had a good gauge on each other's strengths from the little exchange that they had. Gohan started this time with a jump kick that was landing hard and fast. Goku moved his body to the right to dodge the incoming attack. However, once Gohan landed, he reversed his momentum and sped towards Goku's back. Unable to turn around in time to counter or block to Gohan's wide attack, Goku forced his feet into the stadium to plant himself. Cracks formed like a spiderweb on the square stadium, as Goku was firmly on the ground, tensing his back muscles ready for the impact. Gohan slammed into Goku like a freight train shaking the entire stadium, but not moving the rooted Goku. Feeling pain with his tackle, Gohan was stunned for a little bit. Goku took this advantage and grabbed Gohan in a clamp, like a reverse German suplex. He then, with as much force as he could, brought Gohan in front of him. Gohan's feet slammed the ground cementing his position much like how Goku was right now. Goku then punched him as hard as he can uprooting him and sending up ragdolling forward. In a daze, Gohan had just enough sense to change his position and barely latch onto the edge of the ring. Climbing back up, he couldn't help but praise all the training Goku was gone thorough despite his age. You are quite the amazing martial artist. However, I will have to end this match now. Gohan rushed up to Goku with a blinding determination. He knew what this opponent was after, but he didn't know how he would go about it. When he was right in front of Goku, 
He jumped up to fly over Goku. He was anticipating a move like this and swiveled around to meet his aggressor. However, when he turned around, Gohan was nowhere to be seen. He felt something grab his tail in a tight manner. So he turned around to meet a mask right in his face. It turns out that Gohan used the after image technique to fool Goku into thinking he jumped when didn't. Looks like you weren't paying attention, and now you lose. Goku started to limp like he was jello under Gohan's hand. You didn't train your tail enough, and it will be your downfall. Gohan started to raise his hand to start harassing the young child, until he started to feel something unusual. He was instead being lifted up by the tail. Goku had a snicker on his face as he flicked his tail up launching Grandpa Gohan in the air. Gohan felt proud but ashamed at being played a fool by his grandson. Both of them started to do their most prized move to hurl at each other. Kamiha Miha. The two beams clashed in the air, but the one with advantage was obvious to everyone there. Gohan was being slightly pushed even higher in the air. Before he could really lose, Gohan conceded already achieving his objective. I give. After hearing those words, both contestants powered down their blast until Gohan was safely on the ground. Gohan removed his mask and turned towards Goku. It's me, your grandpa. But you already knew that, didn't you dash just as he was able to finish his sentence? Goku already hugged him hard making him stumble back a little. I, I am sorry grandpa, for what I did. Gohan had a look of astonishment on his face, surprised that Goku knew the cause of his death. Ha ha ha. No worries my grandson. I know it wasn't your fault. I am quite content with the afterlife anyways. Goku was talking to Gohan a little bit about his life after his passing. While Gohan told him about his circumstances in the overworld and his visit. After saying goodbye to his old master and the esteemed person who brought him back to see grandson. He parted ways with them after a quick last hug from his grandson. After Grandpa Gohan left, Baba started her divination to the last Dragon Ball. The seventh of the those Dragon Balls that you have. No biggie. Baba started to emit some strange magic power to the crystal ball while concentrating. Before long, a vision of a car that was slightly off the dirt road smoking came into view. Odd, from what I know Pilaf shouldn't have crashed like that. 120km over there. It should be near the car and is not moving. Goku quickly thanked Baba and left Roshi to catch up with his sister. He completely ignored Roshi's pleading cries to take him with Goku. Arriving in no time thanks to his Nimbus, Goku slammed down next to the smoking car. What he found tied on the car surprised him. Dr. Briefs. His sleeping figure's hands were tied to the trunk of the car binding him. Hearing a voice, Dr. Briefs woke up with a jolt. Goku Dr. Briefs finally had a look of excitement on his face, compared to his usual indifferent expression. Goku quickly cut the ropes that bonded Dr. Briefs, making him rub his red wrists with an irritated expression. Thank you Goku. Before he could ask Dr. Briefs why he was here, the scientist's neck was wrapped in a chokehold, and a gun pointed at his face. Stay back or I will kill him. Goku couldn't believe his eyes in front of him was someone that he thought was dead all this time. Bob. Tall Bob to be a matter of fact as he had a scared look on his face when holding his hostage. Bob discovered the Pilaf gang after they exposed their location for a split second, with his prototype small radar, from the obliterated RR army. He hoped to trade the Dragon Ball for his life and beeline to them. Stay back Goku or I will shoot. He then realized the severity of the situation before him, and his face transformed from a confused expression to a deadly serious one. This only made Bob sweat more as his face contorted with fear. Why? A simple question with seemingly endless answers. I, I was always with Red Ribbon Goku. I was just a low-ranking grunt who got lucky with a job at scouting the powerful Brief family. I was just doing my job. I just gave them information and nothing else. Did you kill Bob? Bob's face immediately turned into one of regret. However, it didn't last long, replacing it with a look of resolve and fearlessness. He backed out from the job. We were in it together so when he said that he didn't want to do it, we couldn't have any trails behind us. Goku had enough of Bob's drivel, and with extreme speed, separated Dr. Brief and his tall assailant. Hitting the ground with a thud, Bob looked up with extreme fear if the water leaking out from between his pants was enough of an indicator. Please, think of the times we had. Goku did think of the week that they got to know each other. Flashback, Goku nodded at the two approaching men when they saw each other. A standard greeting when seeing each other. 
The Bobs nodded in return before going their separate ways. End of flashback, a single tear fell out of Goku's eye. He suppressed his emotions and blasted him with a Kai blast taking in Bob's scream of agony. I will always remember you Bobs as good people in my heart. The people in the bushes and Dr. Brief's sweat dropped at the exaggerated display. Seeing this as opening, three mechs of various sizes ambushed the mourning Goku. Goku had his eyes closed because he was mourning the death of Bob and he still had it closed when he effortlessly caught the smaller mech. He swung with all his might and launched the small mech, making it crash into the other ones. The force was so strong that they started to fly to the never-ending sky. A-H-H-H-H-H, the Pilith gang is blasting off again. After that rude interruption, Goku went back to respecting the pile of ash on the floor, as if it was important. Goku and Dr. Briefs quickly left the scene on Goku's Nimbus, and flew back to Capsule Core, after explaining what happened to Master Roshi, the destruction that is left there was still present in all of its glory. Bob's body was still in the exact same position, weirding Dr. Briefs a little with all the blood. Unsuccessfully avoiding getting blood on his shoes, Dr. Briefs made his way towards his lab, while Goku went towards the home phone in the living room, dialing Bulma's number that she gave him. It rang twice before she answered. Bulma, Goku, what are you doing at my house? Did you get your forun and get the last Dragon Ball? We are at the ruins of the Red Ribbon Army HQ. Come to us to help us find my father and mother. Actually, while I found the last Dragon Ball, your father was also there and I picked him up. There was silence on the phone. Goku could feel the Bulma's anger and frustration from the other side of the phone permeate under his skin. You mean I have been out here in his hot sun and dusty debris for nothing? Nothing? Not wanting to deal with Bulma's increasing fury with his silence, Goku hung up immediately. Needless to say, he felt sorry for Yamcha and the others that will face her wrath. Coming from the lab, Goku saw Dr. Briefs and Panchi walk into the room. They looked as calm as ever despite everything that has happened. Mrs. Briefs, you were here the whole where? Oh, Goku, just call me Panchi. My husband has a secret hiding space that he told me to go. While he went to destroy the raider, what a thoughtful man. There was even tea ready for me. Surprised at the fact that Panchi could just sit around with T while everything was happening was less extreme than Dr. Briefs telling Bomber about this so-called safe room. After having a lovely time talking with the Briefs over a cup of tea, the ticking time bomb finally arrived. Coincidentally, Goku had to go to the restroom at the exact same time. What luck! Construction was happening all over Capsule Core with people coming and going. The Dragon crew didn't want to disturb the entire town. So they all went to a nearby desert to summon the dragon. You want to know more about your race? Master Roshi was stroking his beard accessing Goku's wish to see if it was worthy enough. As if he would do a worthy wish. Yeah, I know that I am different than everyone else. So I would like to know more about me and my body. Alright, let's do this. I'm excited. Krillin spoke for everyone here on their anticipation towards this event. Naturally, everyone here present besides Bulma and Goku has not seen a divine dragon. No reason for making them wait any longer. Goku adhered to their wishes and summoned Shenron. Eternal Shenron, by your name I summon you forth. Goku still couldn't believe that he was summoning a reality-bending dragon. Darkness spread originating from the Dragon Balls onto the bright sky. The Dragon Balls glowed ominously once more illuminating the now dark atmosphere. A stream of a yellow light erupted from the Dragon Balls, forming the incredible dragon before them. Everyone was in awe at the grand display that loomed over them. The dragon's voice boomed over everyone making sure that its might is asserted and heard. I am the eternal dragon Shenron. I can grant you one wish. State your wish. I would like a book of some kind containing all the information that is important for my race. From my body compared to humans to my history. Goku roared from the top of his lungs. What he is asking is only for information that Shenron should have, not any real relative bending powers. The eyes of Shenron glowed an even brighter color of red as a glowing ball of light promptly floated above the dragon crew. It has been done. Farewell. After saying his short goodbye, Shenron converted back into a ball of light. The light went straight towards the Dragon Balls, before they started to rise up to dash into the open sky. Before they can though, Goku leaped up and caught a random ball to store inside his pocket. The light slowly started to fade back into normalcy, ending the spectacular event. He wasn't much of a conversationalist. Oolong thought that knowing a dragon would give him brownie points with the ladies. Oh well, he can always lie. Technically he did meet a dragon. Why did you grab a dragon ball Goku? Krillin looked at Goku in confusion. Goku couldn't possibly be greedy enough for another wish. So if bad guys want to use the dragon balls, they will have to go through me. 
Even though Goku did want to abuse the Dragon Balls, this book will tell him if he would be able to or not. Ah, good idea. After the Red Ribbon Army incident, everyone realized how powerful and detrimental it would be if some evil entity obtained these Dragon Balls. Knock on wood. After suspending in the air for a little, a book descended from the air onto the hands of the waiting Goku. Everyone was curious about the contents, so Bomber erected a house for them to comfortably read. Roshi, Krillin, Yancha, Pua, Oolong, Chichi, Bomba, and Goku all entered the house, and the couches were able to hold them all with room to spare. Goku began reading the title and table of contents before actually starting the book. The book cover had a dragon that looked like Shenron surrounding its edge for all to see. The title of the book was called Information of the Saiyan Race. Straightforward and to the point. Opening the book that had that new book smell, he encountered the Table of Contents. Ash Table of Contents Part 1 History of the Saiyans Chapter 1 Ancient Era Chapter 2 Prime Era Chapter 3 Downfall of the Saiyans Part 2 Culture of the Saiyans Chapter 4 Fighting Capabilities Chapter 5 Biology Chapter 6 Society Part 3 Transformations of the Saiyans Chapter 7 8 Transformations Chapter 8 Super Transformations Chapter 9 God Transformation Chapter 10 Combinations Hybrids and Others Dash Part 1 History of the Saiyans Chapter 1 Ancient Era Saiyans could be dated back to before age 300 or further back residing in the home world, planet Sadala. Ancient Saiyans at their core were very primitive in their desire for violence and conflict. Their Kai as modern society has it as fundamentally different from their descendants. Although their Kai is different from each other, their usage of it is mostly the same, besides the usage of some transformations. In the ancient era, due to their unruly and inhumane lifestyle, there rose a group of righteous Saiyans that tried to fight back against their own race to have them stop their ways. Their leader was named Jumoshi, and he held an incredible power to help stop their people. This was the power of the Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan God. More detail in part 3. With his noble heart, the transformations gave him an incredible boost of power that was able to push back his opposition, but it wasn't enough. Eventually, he destroyed himself with his own powers, leaving behind a legend and bloodthirsty race. Due to internal strife, Planet of Sadala was destroyed leaving the Saiyans homeless. Obtained by unknown means, a small group left on spacecraft in an unknown direction. Eventually, they made it to another planet, one that was already inhabited by a highly civilized race, Planet Plant and Age 550. The Tuffles that lived there welcomed their foreign invaders seemingly unconcerned because of their high technological standard. They lived there for decades in the wastelands, while the Tuffles lived in big cities with a high populace. Caving into their violent disposition, they started a war with the Tuffles in age 720, declaring to wipe them out. With their high population and high technology, they were able to combat the warrior race, causing a 10 long war. In age 730, a once in a 100 year event that allowed the Saiyans to finally throw the Tuffles into the drain, a full moon. Once in a full moon, Saiyans are able to use their unique biology to transform into great apes, by looking at the full moon to absorb Blunt's waves. More detail in part 3, finally getting rid of their opposition. They renamed the planet to Planet Vegeta, and inhabited and integrated the Tuffles hide technology to enhance their fighting experience. A notable piece of technology is the Scouter that is able to read another's power level. Approached by an alien race named the Arcosians, they were hired to invade and sell a planet to them in exchange for technology. Saiyans, using the Arcosians as a jump, started to conquer worlds and sell them to provide a suitable outlet for their destruction. This ushered in what is called the Prime Age or Modern Age of Saiyans, as they have gotten less barbaric, while still retaining their need for fighting. Chapter 2 Prime Age The Prime Age of Saiyans could be marked when they started to become world conquerors, or when they were enlisted in the Cold's army. The Saiyans were enlisted to King Cold's army, the universe's emperor and biggest military in the universe, in age 731, only one year after their war with the Tuffles. The next into King Cold's army, later to be known as Frieza's army and empire in age 732, they were the top group in terms of their fighting prowess. Due to being able to grow stronger as they fight more, Saiyans were rising in power much faster and consistently. As Saiyans in this age, they were always discriminated against as unintelligent monkeys only useful for fighting. This fighting prowess and potential of the race, 
had set the precedent for their doom. Chapter 3 Downfall of the Saiyans Saiyans and their love for destruction would eventually lead them to their destruction. Frieza who had the power of Saiyans many times over was beginning to grow concerned because of the legend of the Super Saiyan. Yamashi interference from long ago led the descendants of the barbaric Saiyans to perish. The God of Destruction, Beerus, deemed Saiyans barbaric and annoying, and called for their death. Frieza listened to his order fearing otherwise, and on age 737, summoned all Saiyans to back to their homeworld. When all the Saiyans arrived, Frieza launched a devastating planet-destroying move to eradicate planet Vegeta. A small group of Saiyans survived the genocide by being off-planet at the time. A notable Saiyan is named Bardock who was the only one to try and stop the destruction, despite doing nothing because of his low power. Ash Part 2 Culture of the Saiyans Chapter 4 Fighting Capabilities Most Saiyans, although having a love for fighting and potential for power, very few Saiyans were considered prodigies. They were determined from birth their rank, and very few ascended those rankings later on. These included low class, mid class, and the elite. Most Saiyans are low class, and they stay there for all their life unless they can exponential growth later on. Low class Saiyans dominated average jobs, and only top low class warriors fought in the front lines. Mid class Saiyans dominated higher ranks such as generals in the Saiyan army. Elite Saiyans were very few and mostly are rulers or descendants of them. Some low-class Saiyans are made into infiltration babies. They are sent off to planets that have low powers as babies, so they can conquer them. For low-class Saiyans, this is a sort of rite of passage. If they are successful, they are integrated into the army and receive great rewards. If a Saiyan achieves a near-death experience and survives, they would gain what is called a Zenkai boost. This boost will effectively make them stronger than they were before the experience without any side effects. Chapter 5 Biology Babies in the Saiyan Race are normally not nurtured by their parents but hibernates inside a healing pod since birth. As mentioned before, Saiyans uses scouter technology to determine babies at birth to see what class they are in. Normal healthy Saiyans usually have a humanoid form with dark hair and dark eyes. These can be changed during transformations. They come in all sizes and sport a tail just above their rear that allows them to transform into a great ape. An untransformed Saiyan's hair does not change from birth while they can grow facial hair but at a very slow rate. Saiyans as a warrior race stays in their prime fighting condition until they are 8 years of age. In their childhood, they stay small in size throughout their adolescence. When they achieve adulthood, they have a growth spurt to their prime. Saiyans are naturally resilient as their planet has high gravity, and evolution made them more resistant to elements. Their tail is their natural weak spot but can be trained like any other muscle to eliminate that. Ingrained in their DNA, Saiyans are violent by nature, but some are an exception to that. Saiyans normally have a high sex drive as adults, but a low birth rate. With this and the rough activities of Saiyans, the Saiyan population was never able to grow large. Chapter 6 Society Saiyan Society as a whole is very cutthroat and looks out for yourself to deal with a few exceptions. Most Saiyans have a detached emotional base by choice. They do not share familiar love by choice, and strong-willed people are what Saiyans seek out for breeding purposes. Some jobs of Saiyans include technicians or lower-class jobs like a butcher. Their appetite is enormous and is found to eat almost anything presented to them. Dash Part 3 Transformations of the Saiyans Chapter 7 8 Transformations Widely known for their 8 transformations, all Saiyans with tails can naturally transform with a full moon. Exposure to these blood's waves allows Saiyans to tap into their simian roots, and the transformation is about controlling emotional anger. The first transformation is known as the Great 8 Transformation. The Saiyan body will spurt Simeon's characteristics and grow until they become a 15 to 20 meter 8 with red eyes. With no proper training, this form will cause one to go berserk and rampage against enemies and allies. The known power gained from this transformation is X10 to your base form. The next step in 8 transformation is a technique called Perfect Control. Perfect control also is used in all other transformations allowing them to advance as well. When using perfect control on the Great 8 transformation, one will achieve the perfect 8 transformation slash 8 transformation. This transformation reverts the Saiyan back into a humanoid form while still retaining hair all over their body. One's power level will not increase, but with a humanoid body, there is more physical and Kai control compared to the Great Ape. Chapter 8 Super Transformations Super Transformations are the second branch of transformations that a Saiyan can embark on. These transformations allow Saiyans to tap into the height of raw power and is about righteousness and emotional release. 
To achieve the first transformation, the Super Saiyan transformation, one needs S cells. All Saiyans have S cells and can transform into Super Saiyans. To obtain enough S cells, one needs to have a gentle nature or increase in fighting power. If they experience a strong emotional trigger while having enough S cells, one can transform into a Super Saiyan. S cells are passed down to children making it easier for them to transform. The first step in this branch of transformations is the normal Super Saiyan transformation. This transformation will greatly enhance all aspects of their body and Kai to extraordinary heights. The said Saiyan will have their hair be golden and standing, while their iris turn a blue color. The known power gained from this transformation is X50 to your base form. When undergoing Super Saiyan, all violent dispositions of Saiyan biology will be enhanced. By using perfect control, you will be able to control your emotions, normalize its increase of power, and transform to the next step. This stage called Perfect Super Saiyan. Before going to the next step, the Super Saiyan transformation has two subcategories. These subcategories are not actual transformations, but applications to the Super Saiyan transformation. By forcefully injecting Kai into muscles to inflate them, one can increase their power greatly and speed marginally. However, by doing this, you will lose an exponential amount of Kai in return, and if in a prolonged state, one will be crippled for a short period of time. This form is called Super Saiyan Enhanced. By forcefully injecting more Kai into one's muscles to inflate them, one will increase the first Super Saiyan transformation to its max potential. However, by doing this, you will lose an extreme amount of speed and stamina, due to the muscles being inflated too much. In a prolonged state, one will be crippled for a short period of time, due to stress on the body. This form is called Super Saiyan Maxed. The next step in the Super Saiyan transformations is the true Super Saiyan transformation. To achieve this transformation, you will need to have done perfect control, and achieved perfect Super Saiyan. After this, you will need another emotional trigger or intense training to make the breakthrough. This transformation is 2x stronger than Super Saiyan, x100 to base, in all fighting aspects. Electrical currents will circulate around the body, making the hair grow even pointer. This transformation marks the end of the Super Saiyan transformations. But there is one more special step that one can take to forcefully increase one's power. Similar to Super Saiyan Enhanced and Maxed, this is an incomplete step to forcefully increase your power. However, due to its enormous power buff and only one limiter, it can also be considered a step. It is the Beyond Super Saiyan transformation. To achieve this form will have needed to achieve true Super Saiyan, and encounter a special circumstance while having intense training. This transformation is 4x stronger than true Super Saiyan, x400 to base, in all fighting aspects. One's hair will grow longer if not so already, and their eyebrows would disappear. This transformation's major drawback is its usage of Kai and its dependency on it compared to the other forms that stress the body. Due to this, Kai will deplete abnormally fast making the transformation short but powerful. Chapter 9 God Transformation The last and most powerful branch that a Saiyan can use is the Saiyan God Transformation. This branch only includes one transformation, but is unique compared to the others. To achieve this transformation, a ritual where one needs to have five righteous Saiyans infuse their righteousness into their target, making that person a Super Saiyan God. Another method is to have a divine individual train you, and long exposure to Divine Kai. The Saiyan God transformation is the strongest form a Saiyan can take without any combinations of branches. The God form uses God Kai instead of normal Kai, making the form extremely more powerful. One has to keep doing to God ritual to regain their godly form, unless they are able to integrate God Kai into their body. Doing such a thing is a near impossible task. Chapter 10 Combinations, Hybrids, and Others Combination is the process of combining different branches to have a multiplied powered form that has characteristics of all the branches that are used. Combinations are widely unknown territory, but it is theorized that it is possible to combine any form to another. Herbids of Saiyans has a higher battle potential than normal Saiyans do. There are strict breeding regulations because Saiyans in the Prime Era were afraid of being overrun and outpowered by hybrids. It is unknown if hybrids are able to achieve all transformations that normal Saiyans do or if they have more. There are exceptions to transformations depending on special individuals. One such example is the legendary Super Saiyan who has two forms, Super Saiyan and Legendary Super Saiyan. There may be other special transformations that are unique that are unknown at the moment. Wow. Just while everyone was stunned speechless when Goku was reading the book to everyone, they felt like they were reverted back to little kids being read a storybook. 
They all hung on to every word and looked at each other in surprise. What now? It was a lot to digest. Everyone turned to face Goku. The one was most affected by this information. What they saw was Goku laced in deep thought instead of the shock and wow that they were feeling at this moment. Goku, of course, knew about most of the stuff in the book, but the main reason he asked for it was a cover story and some information that would fill the gaps that he had. Namely, Super Saiyan 4 and if it was possible to achieve it. However, from what Shenron has stated, the Saiyan transformations had different names than before. True Super Saiyan for Super Saiyan 2 and beyond Super Saiyan for Super Saiyan 3. It does make sense if you look at the function of Super Saiyan 2 and 3, besides the chronological order that they came in. Super Saiyan 3 was always a fail-safe form, and had a huge problem that the other two main transformations did not have. Super Saiyan 2 was always the state that Saiyans used in long fights, before the introduction of God Forms because it has no restrictions with all the power. So saying that the Super Saiyan 2 form is the true Super Saiyan form, in terms of usability and practicality is correct. However, he didn't dwell too much on that because it didn't really matter what the names were. He main thing that was shouting out at him at this moment was, Shadow Dragons. Seeing that Super Saiyan 4 does exist if he just combines the ape and Super Saiyan forms, it is logical to believe that Shadow Dragons do exist as well. Until he confirms it with Kami and Popo, he has to take all precautions to prevent a potential calamity. The two wishes he has done would pave the way to becoming stronger, so he doesn't really need any more. The next wishes would only be for emergencies, and any wishes that he could prevent, he will do his best. So Goku is from a race called Saiyans. This is a lot to take in. Bulma was a little shaken that she seemingly knew nothing about Goku and his race. Yeah, no kidding. No wonder why he is so powerful. He is from a warrior race. Yamcha couldn't help but think of all the advantages Goku had compared to him. However, he would just have to get used to it. Don't forget that he is one of the last of his kind. That must be hard. Chichi pointed out the most relevant piece of information that immediately brought everyone's attention to the surface. Is no one going to bring up this so-called god transformation? After talking a bit more about the book, everyone was satisfied with the excitement that was brought for a time being. Goku was quiet for most of the conversation, feigning the fact that he needed to process the big information. Alright, Goku, it is time for the next phase of your training. From what I heard, Bulma is creating something that will make your training harder. You will travel around the world to gain more experience. The rest of us will go back to the Turtle House for more training. Shichi, Bulma, and Goku left towards Capsule Call while Oolong, Rushi, Yamcha, Krillin, and Pure left towards the Turtle House. Arriving at the Capsule Corporation, all the repairs have already been done and it wouldn't be soon before normal operations ensued. Entering the house and looking for Dr. Briefs, they found him in the destroyed laboratory doing work like there wasn't debris around him. Coming up to him, he turned around with a bright smile on his face. Hey kiddos, just working on improving the gravity on the chamber. After the whole escapade that Dr. Briefs endured, he felt that he owed Goku enormously. So in return, he fervently started working on gravity manipulation. Hey dad, we need a portable gravity chamber. How long do you think that would take? Well, I think that I can achieve 5x gravity in another week or so. Something portable would probably take a lot longer. Well, let's get to it. Week later, Goku routine was pretty standard in the house. Training in the morning, talking with the girls, trying to avoid getting pulled into things like shopping, back to training and sleep. Goku was still stuck in the 2x gravity just doing exercises that he normally would. There was currently no training partner or combat robots for him to practice on, but he was still growing stronger. Two weeks later, hey Goku, I finally finished the portable gravity chamber. I call it the gravity belt. Dr. Brief's voice boomed through the gravity chamber, slightly startling Goku who was doing push-ups right now. Goku just changed to 3x gravity after being under 2x felt normal. Goku left the gravity chamber incredibly sweaty to see Bulma, Chichi, and Dr. Briefs. Seeing the shirtless body of Goku, Chichi immediately looked down, while Bulma looked to the left. They both had a fierce blush on their face, while the guys seemingly didn't notice, as they were focused on talking to each other. This is the gravity belt that will go around your waist. As he was saying this, he was putting on the belt for Goku making Bulma and Chichi regretful that they didn't volunteer for the role. The belt had a blue circle in the middle with buttons around it. The belt fits like a bracelet with a black exterior, so you can change the gravity here, and it can up to 5x gravity. Dr. Briefs pressed a few buttons on the belt and the display on the blue circle. 
flash 5x a couple of times. After three flashes, Goku felt an immense pressure forcing him to splat on the floor. Goku. It took them 30 minutes just to lift him up and press the button again, with a little help of machines. Well, a lot of help. Goku looked at Dr. Briefs with an annoyed expression on his face, while he put his arms up in defense. Well, I guess this is goodbye for three years. Goku was saying goodbye to Chichi and Bulma at the entrance. He was only carrying a small bag with the gravity belt strapped tightly with a 3x on display. Goku dashed from the entrance and onto the nearby forest to experience the world. He dashed as hard as he can making him a blur to the regular eyes. He truly did not know what to expect. But he knew he was going to have fun doing it. Seven months, seven months in. And Goku has already seen a lot of what this world had to offer. From dinosaurs to secret underwater adventures. He has even been on pirate ships and seen numerous martial arts dojos. He was able to extract a lot of inspiration from their fighting styles and techniques. So far he has almost finished with his 3x training. Every soil he has trekked through has sunk from the sheer weight that he is currently. One year and six months, halfway there. And he is still discovering new things. Although civilization is more concentrated in the cities, the Badlands had also some interesting creatures and people. He has encountered enormous sandworms to a pack of a hundred wolves. He has already advanced to 4x since he was 9 months in, and has never taken the belt of ever. Every muscle was being trained. Every. Single. One. Two years and ten months, his around the world trip is almost over. The best part about being strong was that he never needed money for anything. Food, water, and even clothing were all provided by animals. He just advanced to 5x gravity. He has theorized that since his body is smaller and more underdeveloped compared to his prime phase, he is unable to train more intensely. Although the training he is doing now would greatly benefit more than usual. Anyways, it is about time to start heading back to the group. Let's hurry up Bulma. We will be late for the tourney. We have to meet up with the rest of them. Chichi was exasperated with how long Bulma spent in the bathroom. She personally didn't like makeup as she didn't really how it felt on her face. But she understood the need for it. Chichi grew up to be quite the young lady at the age of 15. Her growth spurt already occurred making her almost the same height as Bulma. With other areas growing as well. I am sorry Chichi. This is the first time we will be seeing Goku in three years. Sorry if I want to at least look even more beautiful than I already am. From Bulma's words, Chichi started to become really self-conscious about her looks. And if Goku would find her pretty or not. Wait, why would she care if he did or not? Those thoughts really didn't help when Bulma stepped out of the house sparkling a little. Her hair was long with curves that really brought out her facial features. Bulma and Chichi actually went on an adventure of their own. With Bulma's tech and Chichi's small knowledge of martial arts, they were able to gather the other six Dragon Balls throughout the three years. They had talked about what they wanted to do with it despite Goku's asking them to only use it during an emergency. After hearing about Goku's race and other factors, they thought that the Dragon Balls would be the best to solve the issues that they had. They only need Goku's last ball. Speaking of the devil, before the group could load up in the helicopter to meet up with the others, they could see a storm of dirt approach them. The dirt blew up like a storm right in front of the duo. Yet no dirt got on any of them. After the dust settled, a short boy emerged that the girls didn't expect. Goku. Phew, I made it. Goku panted from the full sprint that he had done for a while. The 5x gravity really was a workout, considering that the pavement was partly cracked from Goku's feet. Goku took a quick shower and changed his clothes from the spares that he had left over. Before all of them boarded the helicopter, Bulma was very visibly disappointed when Goku was still as short as he was, but she quickly hid it being the 19-year-old she was. It was really weird being the age that you are supposed to have puberty, but in a child's body. Goku guessed that Saiyans didn't have puberty because of their special growing phases, or that it will come in like a truck after he grows into his prime phase. He put that thought into the back of his mind, since it wasn't doing him any favors, and put the focus ahead of him. The 22nd World Martial Arts Tourney. Arriving at the meter point at the airport, they meet up with the rest of the crew. Goku. Krillin saw the trio first, and noticed Goku mixed in with the girls. Everyone went up to them to greet them. You have grown a little bit Goku. Doesn't matter. I will win this time. Yamcha said pointing at himself with an extremely arrogant smirk. Yes, you will Yamcha. I believe in you. Goku patted on his arm with a sincere expression on his face. So Goku, how has your training going? What is it that Bomber created to improve yourself with your trip around the world? Yeah, 
Bulma and her dad were working gravity manipulation, and they gave me this. Goku pointed at the belt that he was currently wearing. On it was flashing the image of 2X in bright white. Goku needed to turn down the gravity, or else the helicopter they came in would have been brought down from the weight. Huh. So what is it increasing your gravity to put more stress on your body and muscles? Roshi was prodding Goku with a stick to see if it would affect the stick or Goku in some way. Before Goku could answer, Bulma injected feeling a little too happy to be discussing science with the old coot. That is the basic premise behind it. How it works is that it calibrates the effect of gravity that is already placed on the user and enhances it to whatever degree you want. That is why his clothes and other necessities are not affected. But he is. It is only affecting him throughout his entire body. Bulma finished off her rant on the amazing technology that she made. Hum, I see. So what right now he is at 2x gravity compared to us. Interesting. Everyone nodded at the simple explanation that Pua whipped up. They didn't really pay attention to the details, only results. Bulma didn't notice it soaking up the fact that she is indeed a genius making Chichi and Goku look at her in pity. After talking with the crew about what they did over the three years that they were separated, they all heard their flight being called. They all ushered in the plane taking up their assigned seats that were next to each other. Bulma was able to get Goku's pass last second when he showed up to her house. Pays to be friends with some of the most powerful people on Earth. They all talked some more on the short flight, while Roshi was busy groping the flight attendant. We made sure to point out that we didn't know him when she asked. Landing at the airport, they quickly held two taxis that were already on the road to go to the tournament. They finally arrived at the entrance of the tournament grounds. They saw hordes of people crowd around not letting anyone else go through. There are a lot more people here than last time. I guess the last tourney really got people riled up. Pua hovered above everyone trying to see an end to the massive cluster of people. Everyone was heading to the spectator stands while the registration stand was pushed back a little. Pua noticed a line sort that was blocked with some rope. They headed towards that line and were about to enter before someone stopped them with their nasally voice. Why if it isn't my former rival the Turtle Hermit? Former because I am way out of your league now. Walking up to them was an old man of the same aura of Master Roshi. When they locked eyes, there was a fierce clash of sparks that erupted. Why if it isn't my former rival the Crane Hermit? Former because he couldn't take rejection from a lady unlike me where I get all of them. Shen spat to the side at the old jab and snorted at the Roshis's entourage behind him. He scanned the orange outfits with disgust. No matter. Although your school was more prevalent in the last world martial arts, it was only because my school was not present. This time however we will stomp on you flat until you disappear with Chen and Chiaotzu. Shen pointed to the tall man with an extra eye on his forehead and the pale person that was floating. Are you smoking something more severe than last time? You up the ante from weed to cocaine. My students won't even see you in the finals let alone compete. Shen PH. Not willing to put up with Roshi any longer. Shen headed to the large crowd, while Chen and Xiaotzu went to the presumable registration line. Who was that Master Roshi? Krillin looked between the two old monsters with curiosity. That was my old friend turned rival. We had the same masters, but he was led down a dark path. Not wanting to discuss it further, they all continued their way to the roped in line. You guys here to register. It was a large man with a muscular complexion. His eyes scanned the group resting on a few particular faces. Yeah. Goku answered simply, only contestants. You better register or you will regret it. The non-combatants, including Roshi, grumbled before heading onto the big crowd that was formed. Goku knew that that mass was going to test the patience of Bulma before she did something to get her to the front. The rest went through the line, making it very obvious that they were fighters when everyone glanced at them. They recognized the group, and the crowd broke into a discussion. Goku could easily hear what they were saying. Who do you think would win? I think that Goku kid is going to win this time. What are you saying? He was strong, but he is still as short as he was before. I think that Jackie Chan will win if he comes back. I don't see Jackie, I believe Yamcha will win. His wolf fang fist was cool. It wasn't long before that person was shoved out of the crowd and back into the front of the entrance. Everyone at the preliminary stage looked at the trio with a bit of fear as they walked into a whole slew of different fighters. An old man came out of the woodworks and started talking to the contestants. 
He basically told everyone that participants were increasing, making the tournament come every three years. Goku on the corner of his eyes, saw a familiar luscious hair attached to a familiar old man. Everyone went up and grabbed a paper from the box. Everyone was on separate brackets like the plot planned. Yamcha in block 1, Goku and Krillin in block 2, Jackie in block 3. Of course, the preliminaries served as a reminder as to how brutally strong they were compared to the regular fighters. The ones in the same block as them really started to regret their life decisions, and considered backing out right there. Being the douches that they are, Chen and Chaozu came up, and Chen bumped Yamcha on the should inciting a response. And that he did when Yamcha nearly fell down. Hey watch it eyeball. You would think that with an extra eye, a freak like you would see where you are going. Tian stopped while Chiaotzu looked worriedly at him when his expression didn't change. Tian turned around and glared at the smirking Yamcha. Better watch your back weakling. Hope you squeal like an actual wolf when I crush you. After those words, they turned around and left. Needless to say, the prelims were pretty stale with each fighter easily winning each round. The crew studied their rivals' abilities while they did the same, but no one was really showing too much as the fights were not hard enough. They found the others at the front after weaving through the massive crowd that was surrounding the ring. How did you guys get to the front of all those people? Krillin asked the others. Everyone looked a little embarrassed when he asked that besides Bulma and Launch. At the same time, everyone within Ishok glared at Bulma before she returned it at full force. All I did was make everyone in my way smaller with my newly invented shrink wave and went to the front. They got a free show from the bottom up anyways before I unshrank them. So I don't know why they are so touchy. At that remark everyone in the crowd looked away. While the fighting trio looked at the gun on her hand, that she produced out of nowhere with great interest. An improved version of your shrink watch. Nice. Goku said with earnest. Thanks. At least someone appreciates my technology. Bulma said with a little more oomph than usual. Sure enough, the contestants were called just a few moments after. All contestant please gather at the main hall. The tournament will start soon. Entering the hall. They saw Jackie, Chen, Chiaotzu, a man-wolf and another guy with bandages wrapped around his hands. Goku was stretching himself while the announcer was getting everything ready. Krillin and Yancho were talking amongst themselves before the nag petrol came. Looks like garbage has been smelling up the whole room. Don't worry, we will take it out soon enough. Yancho and Krillin looked at each other in exasperation. They could not believe that this guy is still trying to talk trash. They both looked towards Goku and he was completely ignoring them both in favor of his warm-ups. Hey Goku, they are talking to us. Yamcha thought that he was a little slow at the uptake on this one. Huh. Oh, I thought they were talking to themselves. Real martial artists show their training on the stage, not by losing their dignity with talking outside of it. After that snarky answer, Krillin and Yamcha smoked at the embarrassed Chen. I'll show you. They both stormed off just as the announcer called them over to draw lots. It was the same charming announcer with his blonde hair and extravagant gestures. Let's start with last tournament's champion, Jackie Chun. No. For match 2, Yamcha, no point 1, match 1 Putput, no point 7, match 4 Chen, no point 5, match 3, Krillin, no point 8, match 4, Manwolf, no point 2, Match 1, Chaozu, no point 3. Match 2, Goku, no point 6. Match 3, after Goku got the last card, he glanced at the smirking Tian. Staring at him for a few seconds, he adverted his gaze to Chaozu who was next time. He smirked when they made eye contact and put a finger on his eyes and pulled it down, revealing the red below his eyes. After they got stunned for a little, Goku left to spectate the first match. Sorry for making you wait everyone. The 22nd World Martial Arts Tournament begins now. Everyone in the crowd cheered nearly deafening the announcer as he sweat dropped at the excitement. From these eight, the winner will receive 500,000 zini and be officially named the strongest under the heavens. The first match we have is someone by the name of Man Wolf in the left corner. Not to be confused with wolf men who turn to wolves during a full moon. Man Wolf turns into a man during the full moon. Man Wolf walked on stage with a certain amount of swagger in his step. And on the right corner, we have Yamcha, a contestant from the previous tournament. He is known for his wolf fang fist, and judging from his guy, a student at the Turtle Hermit School. We shall see. An actual wolf versus the imitation. Let the match begin. When he heard the word imitation, he scoffed at the ludicrously from such a statement. 
He made the glorious Wolf Fang fist and is proud of such a feat. If any, you are going down kid. I need to meet up with Jackie Chun so I can smash his skull in. Yamcha smirked at the hot-headed man wolf before him and decided to teach him a lesson. Jem PH. I will show you and everyone else what my so-called imitation is. After saying such a bold statement, he launched himself at his opponent. Yamcha went up to the man wolf and him with a straight jab. Yamcha was surprised that the man wolf did not dodge or counter the initial attack. Instead, man wolf hit the wall of the temple hard with a smack. Man wolf's head was spinning a bit with stars surrounding him. Ah, you okay man? For all that spunk, Yamcha was confused at how weak this man wolf was. That didn't last long as he became more vigilant when Man Wolf stood back up. I, I need to beat you to fight that Jackie Chun. Man Wolf wiped the corner of his mouth where some blood was. He spat Jackie Chun like it was full of venom. Why do you hate him so much? He seems like a nice guy. A little perverted though. A little. You should know what he did to me. Horrific flashback. The day was sunny and the park was green. Children were running around playing and there was a park bench where two people were talking to each other. Hey, babe, why don't you come back to my place for a good time? The male of the two started flirting. His efforts were getting him somewhere because the lady that he was flirting with was somewhat interested. Maybe, she fluttered her eyes a bit capturing the male's heart. However, his worst nightmare came knocking on his bench. Ham is something wrong with you lad. There a piece of animal fur stuck to your skin. An old geezer came up to him and told him. He plucked a hair that was sticking out of his shirt, showing it to the couple. The girl was a little disgusted with a questioning gaze directed at the man. W wait I can explain. I a dash. The man was extremely nervous and stuttering. I understand young one. The man sighed a little in relief. You are a wolf man, right? I heard of them. They can become a wolf during a full moon if they so wished. The man was shocked beyond belief. Did this old man mistake me for those low class wolf men? Before he could respond the female beside him jumped up instantly. A wolf man and no. I promise I am not. The man's heart was beating rapidly, sweat pouring down his head wondering where the actual fuck this old geezer came from. Hey, it's okay, don't be ashamed of your race. The old geezer patted his shoulder. Once he said that the girl officially left not wanting to be associated with this man. Wait. As the man was crying, the old geezer's gaze was on the girl's backside drooling. He was about to chase until the man put a hand on his shoulder. The look on his eyes was on the verge of crazy. Who are you? There is no way someone who is old as you would ruin my life for no reason falsely accusing me of being those accursed wolf men. The man was shouting right on the old guy's beard. The old bastards were of course Master Roshi in his normal clothes, while the man was the man wolf. I I I am Jackie Chun. Master Roshi did not know what he did, but he could tell this man was angry. And he really did not want to deal with it and just chase after girls. So he gave him his alias, one that he will hopefully forget. Once Master Roshi said so, he dashed off in the direction of the lady, leaving behind the man wolf in the dust. I will find you, Jackie Chun, until the ends of the earth, and I will be the one who ends you. Master Roshi already forgot about him as his voice faded away focusing on the booty before him. End of the life ending flashback. I have been searching for years. That was my soulmate. And he destroyed the only thing I had. There is no one else with the name of Jackie Chun. And that fake beard is not going to fool anyone. Everyone gasped at the implication. The scandal. The horror. Everyone turned to Jackie Chun who was peeking over the temple wall. All eyes were trained on him making him feel a little uneasy. Jackie sighed. The truth was the only way out. He just shrugged honestly with a comedic expression on his face. This only made Man Wolf even madder. You, insert multiple curse words. I will destroy you after this. Slur after slur, the children's ears were covered from the profanity by their parents. You would applaud them for their quick reaction until you start to question why they were in a brutal fighting tournament in the first place. Sick and tired of man wolf's ranting, Yamcha unleashed his deadly technique on the wolf. Wolf Fang Fist. The barrage of claws came out of nowhere dazing the poor wolf. Hit after hit, no matter how much Man Wolf wanted the pain to stop, it just kept coming. Until finally, Yantra hit him with both claws launching him out of the ring. And the true wolf belongs to Yantra and his amazing technique. Yamcha only had a look of pity in his eyes as he looked at Man Wolf. He kind of reminded him of himself just three years ago. It brought a tear to his eye. For the next match, we have the infamous Jackie Chun coming in from the left corner. Despite the incredible accusation from Man Wolf, Jackie Chun stands up straight like the champion he is. From the right corner, 
We have the arch rival of the famous Turtle School. From the Crane School it is Chiaotsu. If the Crane School is anything like the Turtle School, we are in for some spectacular fights. Let the second match begin. You come from such a prestigious school with a twisted master. Tell me young one why do you go there? I I see. Chiaotsu said nothing making Jackie Chun sweat drop. Sighing, Jackie assumed his attacking position, while Chiaotsu still stood there. Jackie started with a kick to the sternum. He just vanished from his original spot, surprising the young man. Only just a little though. The young man was able to block the incoming kick, but was pushed back from the sheer power making him open to new attacks. Seeing his opening, Jackie appeared above Chiaotsu bringing down a fist that seemed to bring death upon his opponent. Just before the attack could hit, Chiaotsu accelerated backward from his position, making Jackie sink his fist on the ring. Everyone gasped as Chiaotsu flew above everyone. A unique technique of the crane school. Just because you can freely fly in the air does not mean you are invincible. Jackie Chun started charging his Kamehameha, while Chiaotsu still had a stoic expression on his face, confident he will dodge it. Kamehameha. Jackie started running towards Chiaotsu's position and jump up with extreme force with the Kamehameha wave. He launched a kick making Chiaotsu dodge in a hurry. After he made him stumble in midair, Jackie launched his Kamehameha making him fly even further up. Seeing that he could not dodge or counter, Chiaotsu put his hands in front of him in a desperate attempt to stop Jackie. Using his powers, he made Jackie get a stomach ache to force him to slightly move the Kamehameha up, barely grazing the pale martial artist. Touching the top of his head, he patted his head looking for something important. You, you, you made me bald. Missing his lone hair, Chiaotsu started to charge a blob of energy fueled by anger. If you couldn't already see the red shading on his skin. Doden Ray, the beam came out of his fingertip and flew straight towards Jackie. With no aerial mobility, Jackie could only block the incoming attack. The blast exploded making a spectacular light show. Satisfied with the death that he inflicted upon the man that killed his most precious body part, Chiaotsu slowly floated down. Call the match, he is dead, Chiaotsu said in an emotionless tone. Hey, are you sure? The announcer was sweating with fear as he looked up in the sky, wishing for a miracle to happen. And that it did. You forgot someone young one. Jackie Chun emerged from the black smoke and came out like a Miss Lee. Chiaotsu was flustered freezing up a bit. He could faintly hear someone from the audience singing a song that made him want to cry. Free. Free falling those were the last words that he heard when he blacked out from the media punch that knocked him out. Looking back at the young man before him, he couldn't help but lament the fate of them and their teacher. Looking back at the audience, he saw the crane hermit's veins pop out with frustration as he looked at Roshi with eyes that practically spelled death. You old worthless pile of bones. You entered this tournament and destroyed one of my students. Explain yourself. The crane hermit sent the message telepathically into the turtle hermit's brain. Snorting, Roshi gave a curt reply that with contempt seeping into his reply. I don't need to explain yourself you crazy dog. Maybe next time you should train your students more. Walking away he went back to the temple to await his next fights. Just wait and see. If you had that much trouble with Chiaotsu, let me see you get beaten by my number one disciple, Tien. With that last note, he ended the telepathic link abruptly. Although Roshi never once slowed his steps, he couldn't help but worry. Goku, let's see how far your training has got you. After that incredible fight with former world champion and the fresh leaf that is Chiaotzu of the Crane School, we have another monstrous fight as in the left corner. We have Chen who is also from the Crane School. Elder disciple to Chiaotzu, his third eye allows him to see what normal people cannot. In the right corner, we have Goku. Second, only to the champion last tourney. He came back with an agenda to win the trophy from the old geezer. The two people on opposition glared at each other with a hint of disdain. A permanent smirk on Chen's face as he faces Goku despite his companion losing to Jackie just a few short moments ago. You know, you should surrender now. If you don't you will regret it. Chen started his tasteless trash talk once more. Like seriously, if you are trying to bring down your opponent with words, think of something new to say. I know I will regret it. Killing people is something I am not really fond of. Tian growled at Goku's response. Huh, ready to dish out but can't receive. Sounds like a top to me, and not the good kind. Focusing up, this will be the hardest fight in the tourney for Goku. This fight will finally reveal the fruits of my labor. Everything I have been working for, this will be more first checkpoint. 
Yu Chen are nothing more than a checkpoint and something greater. Let the third match begin. Now is the time. Both fighters had their pressure collide in the middle before their bodies moved. The shockwave sent the announcer back as everyone else felt a gust of wind. Filled with anticipation, the crowd cheered crazily when the two fighters leaped towards each other to begin their assault. The Triclops looked down at his opponent figuratively and literally. I mean who else wouldn't underestimate a little kid that looked like he was 12. He launched a heavy drop kick towards Goku's head. Goku easily grabbed his legs with his small arms and spun incredibly fast to daze him. While he was rotating, Goku did a straight jab only for his fist to be encased by Chen's hand, forcing the latter to stop spinning. Tien then tried to twist Goku's arm by forcibly positioning his arm in an irregular way. He was then met with quick resistance stopping him, even though Goku was at the disadvantage position. What is this strength? My hold is getting reversed. Slowly but surely, Tien's hand was getting put in an awkward position, making his face contort in pain and sweat. Quickly thinking about a way to get out of his predicament, he jabbed his finger towards Goku's chest to force him to react and release an opening. Lo and behold, Goku gripped his finger so hard and sudden, that his finger got dislocated, increasing Chen's pain by several fold. Wincing in pain, Chen couldn't hold back his grin that his plan worked. Before Goku could respond to Chen's strange behavior, Chen charged up energy within his finger allowing the yellow lights to infiltrate the gaps between Goku's hands. Doden Ray, Chen's finger exploded making both Chen and Goku recoil back from the explosion. Receiving a concentrated Doden Ray to his hand made his hand be chaired black, while leaving a stinging effect on it. Tien wasn't doing anything better, doing such a risky move did leave some repercussions. His finger was also blackened while still broken. Gritting his teeth, Tien snapped his finger back in its original position, before any lasting damage could occur. Fully standing up, Chen's face turned grim once he knew the shit he was in. You are one powerful foe. It was unwise to underestimate you. However, this is the end of the line for you. Tien raised both of his hands in a spread gesture and brought them up to his face. Solar flare. A blinding light erupted across the arena, making everyone cover their eyes in fear of losing them. Goku was able to efficiently cover them as he closed his eyes while also bringing his shirt to shield as well. However, one opening was enough and Chen took it, flying over to him and the Triclops gave the monkey a strong uppercut to the chest launching him up. Goku flew up with rocketing speeds. Yet Tien managed to catch up to him and flip around to kick Goku at an angle, bringing him back to the ground. The outer ring was approaching fast, and Goku had to something in order to not lose, while Chen sneered triumphantly in the air. Although it was a risk, Goku finally unlocked a technique that he has been having trouble with until today where he has seen some live samples. Mustering all the Kai that he could, he sent it to the palm of his hands and feet, injecting the invisible energy outwards in a light and graceful fashion to stabilize himself. Everyone was getting tenser and tenser, wondering what kind of trick will Goku pull off to save himself, while the martial art practitioners widened their eyes in wonder. Namely, Master Roshi and the Crane Hermit Schools were the ones who recognized what Goku was trying to do first, with the way he was manipulating the Kai. There is no possible way he will be able to use that technique. If he can, he is no longer a monster, but an anomaly that defies common sense. Master Roshi couldn't help but exclaim that out loud as everyone else turned to him. Yamcha and Krillin knew that Goku was up to something, but they didn't know what so they turned to Jackie for some answers. However, Jackie ignored them in turn to watch Goku's antics. Meanwhile, Chen and Master Shen were communicating with their minds linked. That darn kid is trying to use a secret flying technique. Huh. I'd like to see his face when he plants himself on the floor like the monkey that he is. Tien didn't respond to Master Shen, but just watch Goku intently. He didn't believe either, but Goku was no normal person. From his age to his enormous strength, the boy genius could pull this one off too. And Goku did not disappoint. Just before Goku face planted on the floor, his momentum started to decrease and decrease until he started to float with his face inches away from the floor. Everyone gasped as the two hermit had their eyes out of their sockets from the shock that they receive. Amazing, even I can't fly, and yet he was learned in seconds. No no no, how can this be? I spent ages perfecting that technique, and it was stolen so easily by this newborn brat. Unbelievable. Chen destroy him while he is still above the ring out Goku with his newfound propulsion, started to admire the effortlessness that he was able to exhibit, once he cracked the code on the technique. 
After flying a bit, he went back to the platform to resume the fight. Chien was already there waiting for him without a stance. He flew down to meet Goku without interrupting his celebration and learning a new skill. You rotten bastard. Why didn't you attack when I told you to? You listening to me you ungrateful swine. Kill him. There was an annoying fly in his ear, but he ignored it to talk to Goku. You are one of the craziest people out there. However, most geniuses are crazy. I commend you for making me release my final move. One that even you will not survive. Everyone was just calming down from the excitement to process Chen's words. Is this really the end? Or is this going to be like the other times when he said it was the end? What is this final move? Thoughts were interrupted when a voice of a decrepit skeleton started to talk. Chen, are you betraying me? I told you to kill that runt, and you ignored me. This is treason and I won't accept that. I will kill that bastard myself. Shen started to climb the wall, while Tian responded. I, I am done with your ways, Master Shen. I am grateful for what you taught me but I don't want to be a hitman no more. Veins started to pop out of Shen's head when he heard those words. He did what any honorable man would do and did a preemptive strike. Doden Ray, instead of targeting Goku as everyone thought, he aimed it at Chen in a fit of anger. Chen saw the attack coming and countered it with his own Doden Ray. The two beams of energy clash releasing sparks across the tourney ground, pushing everyone back. It looked like Tian was at an extreme advantage as he idly stood there with no sweat dripping, as he pushed Shen's beam back. Panicking, Shen used his last trump card with great confidence. Chiaotzu, use your power and disorientate him. Shen smiled until he realized that Chiaotzu was not providing support as he thought. When he looked to his side, he saw that Chiaotzu had a conflicted expression on his face. Conflicted? What was there to be conflicted about? One side is your master that has taught you all that you know versus a traitor to the school that deserves death. When Shen thought this, he got even angrier and shouted at Chiaotzu surprising him out of his thoughts. You pale little piece of shit. Did you not hear what I just told you? Use your power so I can kill that freak. Shen realized his mistake a little too late when Chiaotzu's face hardened at those words. Without remorse, Chiaotzu used his power to make Shen have a stomach ache, weakening his Doden Ray. Trapped between two ends, he mustered a half-baked Kai cluster to serve as a shield right before Chen's Doden Ray impacted him. The Doden Ray exploded creating cuts and bruises all over Shen's body, injuring him brutally. Fortunately for him, his makeshift shield absorbed some of the impact allowing him to survive. There was an eerie silence that felt like it stretched on forever. They dared the other to speak first, until Shen could not take it anymore, and cursed his former students. I you ungrateful traitors, I will come back and get you for this. Mark my words. He then started to stumble off to the entrance to make his leave. Chiaotzu knowing that he was a potential threat moved in for the kill until Chen stopped him. Don't. He taught us. That is worth something. We are now even. Chen's steps didn't falter, nor did you even make a sound of appreciation as he walked past their field of view. Just as they were about to get on with their fight, they heard a sound from beyond the entrance. Crash. Hey, you bastard. You can't just walk in the middle of the road like that. You better have insurance, Bob, before I pound the money out of your hey boys. I think this one is death. Show him how the Beating People Up Club operates. You are one nice dude under everything. Tien only smoked at Goku patronization before he slowly started to rise in the air. Going up meters in height, Tien had a view of the entire event, while Goku stayed on top of the arena. Promptly ignoring the sight of Shen getting practically beaten to death, he raised his interlinking hands together to make a finger pistol gesture. Copious amount of Kai surged forward to his hands, and he separated them making a bright yellow mass of energy stretch from his hands. Goku didn't have any confidence that he could stop the attack at his current state, and really did not want to wait until the arena is made again, before going on to the next battle. Guess I will have to use this move that I have been training for the past three years. It isn't really complete and doesn't have enormous firepower, so I will have to use my full strength. While everyone was focused on Chen, besides the few keen eyes that were able to detect Goku's movements, he subtly lifted his shirt to reveal a blue belt buckle that had some writing on it. A white X3 was revealed making everyone who knew what it was wipe their eyes in disbelief. Pressing a button on the screen, the white X3 vanished and turned into an X1 instead. Releasing his shirt, he got into a neutral stance. Taking a deep breath and closing his eyes, he did the first motion of the Kamehameha. That made his wrist connect in front of him. New technique. Isn't this just a Kamehameha? 
Roshi was watching Goku with all of his attention, once he heard of a new technique that he made. Or was he just pranking? What he did next shocked the old geezer to his core. Instead of moving his hands diagonally to his side, a cyan-colored ball appeared in contrast to a blue one that appeared on his hands. He moved his hands vertically away from each other, stretching out the energy ball, much like how Chen did. Chen saw Goku's move but did not react too much to it and proceeded with his movements. He clasped his hands together in a triangle shape, leaving an opening to concentrate with. Finally being able to release all of his pent-up Kai, he shouted the words that would destroy anything in its way. Tri Beam. A burst of blue Kai launched out of Chen's hands, forming a rhombus shape to obliterate the area before it. It was at this time Goku opened his eyes to look up and counter his technique. Spiraling Tornado. Goku spun his arms around in a circle while slowing pushing forward. Just before his arms would lock and couldn't spin anymore, he did one last push to propel the movement forward. What came out was like a Kamiha Miha, but was spin in Chen's direction in wide circles. Not like a spring but a tornado growing bigger and bigger the more distance it moves away from the source. Winds suddenly started to get sucked into the tornado from the extreme rotation, making everyone hold on to their loose belongings. Goku, with the little experience he has had in making new techniques, used the Kamiha Miha as a template to create a widespread attack representing a tornado. What it lacked in raw firepower it made up with coverage and hindrance. Both attacks collided. The sides of the rhombus and the edges of the tornado grinded on each other, contesting for superiority. However, what the tornado had in the tri-beam didn't was the constant supply of energy. With one last burst, Goku pumped his remaining Kai to force the tornado to grow and swallow the tri-beam into its eye, dissipating all the energy and recycling it to increase the wind pressure. Ugly what? Impossible. The tornado sucked Chien making him lose all control over his body as he spun around in circles. Using the last dredges of his strength, he unwrapped his arms onto its original position. In response, the tornado and the wind died down only for the swirling energy to encompass Tien, with only his head sticking out. Goku immediately loosened his muscles from all the tension and let them drop to his sides. When Chen saw this, he started to struggle to get out, but the tightly coiled energy remained firmly wrapped around his body making him look like he was in a cocoon. Picking him up, Goku threw him up in the air, letting him rest there for a bit. Chin slowly started to fall the floor head first. When he was leveled with Goku's head, the last thing he saw was the small smile that was etched on his face, before Goku punched him to the bottom of the stands. He didn't go peacefully however, as when Chen started to pick up speed, the coils around him started to once again spin him at rapid speeds as they fell off. Crashing at the floor, dirt actually started to fly everywhere landing on a couple of people. A blue head girl, in particular, did not like dirt as she said. I just bought these clothes, and now there is dirt everywhere pa pa ith in ma morph. I can change into a handkerchief if you want. P.O.W. Pua looked down at the large bump on Oolong's face. That went with the rest of his pain-filled face. He only had one word to say. Simp. Once the dust settled, a pair of legs were revealed as the rest of the man was drilled down on the ground. Everyone was speechless for a couple of seconds, as they felt pity for the deflated legs that were on the ground. And W we have a winner Goku. Goku was currently sitting in the back resting his injuries while the next round starts. The last move that he did really wore him out. For all intents and purposes, it was not ready yet. But it did the job. Krillin's and Puppet's match had just started in the background. If the loud cheering wasn't enough of an indicator, any competent martial artist would know who would win, so Goku really didn't pay attention and closed his eyes. His rest didn't last very long when he heard some footsteps approach him. Opening his eyes, he came face to face with Jackie Chun. He was still over. That was a very interesting technique you did. Can you explain it to me a bit? I am very intrigued because I have seen never it from the turtle school before. Did you create it yourself? Jackie tried his best to act nonchalant about his questioning, but he was secretly euphoric with joy and anticipation. A student of his created a new move that was able to counter one of the strongest techniques currently. He couldn't help but feel proud. Proud of himself. I trained that guy. Oh, you are in love with him. Well, guess who trained him babe? As Jackie was ogling the girl in his daydream, Goku smirked a little deciding to mess with the old coot for a little. Why would I tell you? If you win your rounds, then I will have to fight you in the future. I won't just tell you about my greatest move in case you use it against me. What are you? Slow. 
Roshi opened his mouth and closed it several times. That sentence at the end obviously had a double meaning, but that couldn't be it. There is no way that he would know that he was actually Master Roshi. He was so tempted to ask him if he knew or just straight up tell him and get it over with. Saved by the bell as the fight in the stadium came to a closing. Krillin won by a landslide, but just humored his opponent by letting him show his moves. And the winner is Krillin from the Turtle School. This concludes the first round of battles. And we are moving on to the semi-finales. The next match will be the old monster Jackie Chun versus the handsome bandit of the desert Yantra. Jackie reluctantly went up to the stage when his voice was called out. In the end, he didn't reveal his identity, although he felt that Goku knew somehow. The two fighters went to their respective spots and got into their starting positions. Jackie felt at this point the tournament was kinda pointless for him to stay. Krillin and Yantra have gone far beyond his expectations, let alone Goku who has surpassed all odds. You may be the last tourney's champion, but I will show you the fruit of my training under Master Roshi. He even told me that I was probably even a step above him. At this point, he was just rubbing his nose to remove the shit that was leaking out of it. No, I cannot leave this guy get into the finals. All would be lost in the world if he does. It was sufficient to say that it did not take him too long to beat Yancha's skyrocket ego down a peg or two, or all of them. At this rate you could only feel bad for the guy, he only wants to win at something in his life. No mercy in temperament as such in the beating that Jackie was giving the poor man. Jackie W wins and moves on to the finals. For the next match, the original rivals have come to meet from the Turtle School, Krillin vs Goku. Let's see who the superior turtle is. Although we probably already know. Krillin scowled at the last comment that the announcer made even if it was just a whisper. Krillin didn't need another reminder to tell him that he is weaker than Goku. He knew that just fine and has accepted that considering his current performance. It doesn't make it easier for the young man to swallow if he had to be reminded. Let the match begin. Krillin did a fierce assault immediately. If he was going down, he was going to go down with a fight. No one wanted to be humiliated like Yancho was last round. He did a two-prong attack by going so fast that both of his attacks hit in unison. Goku used one hand to block both by going at a faster speed. And Judo slammed the poor monk onto the floor. Quickly recovering, he reached with his legs to wrap around Goku's body to lock him in place. Goku jumped in response and plundered straight down to the floor. Krillin's head was bounded to land first with the way they were positioned, so he tried to loosen up and reposition. This time, however, Goku reversed it and locked Krillin into place by entrapping him with his tail. Krillin had the actual lock and advantage in position, but with Goku's superior strength, he stood still like a statue. Who knew having an extra appendage would actually be useful? Krillin's bowling ball planting in the middle of the stage creating spiderweb extending to the edges. Goku finally released his friend and pried him out of the floor. Once he pulled out the unconscious midget, it was like he pulled out a tight piece on a Jenga tower. The stadium's pieces all fell down without its anchor and landed on the edges with dust scattering everywhere. The winner is of this match of turtles goes to Goku. Unsurprisingly, Krillin was still unconscious on the floor. But when the announcer said that last word, a stream of blood originated from Krillin's non-existent nose. The final match of the 22nd World Martial Tournament. Reminisce of the last tournament, we have a cold blood duel of two of the strongest in the world. Will Goku who was defeated the last tournament redeem himself and achieve vengeance? Or will Jackie retain his title and beat down all that oppose him as he stands atop the mountain of strength? Let the match begin. After the dramatic opening, Goku and Jackie started to have a casual conversation. You have grown tremendously boy. I'll say you have the most potential this world has ever seen. I might even say that with your advent. Something or one will need your skill for the greater good. All I hear is talk old man. You may have won last time, but I have been training arduously for years for this. Truly, I don't believe to win this. But I will try and bring out more of your potential. You do know that with all this time you are wasting, I am recovering my Kai from my last two matches, right? Jackie knew that. Of course, he did. Just because he panicked immediately didn't mean anything. Jackie did a normal approach and sped right in front of Goku. Standing in front of Goku, he planted his feet and did a blur of punches. All aiming at the focal points of a human's body weak points. He tracked Goku whenever he moved and tried to keep up with him. This workout produced some sweat dodging the flurry of punches but nothing too bad. Making it more training for his body, he secretly put a hand through his guy and turned the gravity belt up a little. From two to three, 
Jackie felt extremely aggravated to see that Goku was easily dodging his punches. He finally reacted and kicked his foot high in the air. Jackie put a firm defense in front of his head to block the kick, but instead of a head injury, he left with a leg injury. The kick was only a feint, and changed his momentum to kick at his thigh. The old-timer couldn't stand any more from the weight of the kick. Most of it attributed 3x gravity that was applied to his body, making the kick feel extra heavy. Nursing his wounds with both of his hands, he felt like he was a little child in front of his parent after doing something bad. Just three years ago they were on somewhat equal grounds, and now this 16-year-old teenager can practically kill him whenever he wanted. What a world. To salvage his reputation and pride, he resorted to his last option. Look, Chen is back up and is calling you. Goku turned to look back towards the fighter's stance. He only saw Krillin, Yamcha, and Chiaotzu staring back at him. Before he could Tense up for the attack, he heard Jackie talk. I give up. He was already off stage by the time anyone could react. Roshi, by giving up, kept the little pride that he had by not having his own student hand his ass to him. Everyone knew that had happened and only had one word to describe this kind of behavior. Shameless. The tournament was coming into an official close with the greatest fight that has ever gone on stage appearing early in the matches. The spectators were no doubt disappointed in following fights that were less visually exciting. The Dragon crew all gathered to the front of the tournament grounds with Chen and Chiaotzu in tow to talk to them. Everyone all huddled up to Goku to congratulate him on his fantastic win. Goku, congrats. That fight of your had me on my toes. Yeah, who knew how strong you would have gotten within those three years? I guess that really has to do something with my invention, doesn't it? Everyone ignored Bomber tooting her own horn, no matter how true it was. Yeah, I got really strong over those three years thanks to increasing gravity. You guys should try to do some gravity training too. You will really get stronger faster. Hum. Maybe I should add that to the turtle school training. It would fit quite snugly. Master Roshi, Shiaotsu and I humbly ask if you will become our master. Everyone was in a circle chatting happily about the last three years, until Goku saw smoke coming from the tournament's main building. Knowing what the smoke was about, Goku started heading towards it in large strides. It wasn't long until someone saw Goku leave the huddle and consequentially see the smoke. No words were exchanged when people started to head towards it to see what the commotion was. Entering through the front gate, the first thing that came into vision was the announcer guy with his back against the wall and legs twisted in abnormal angles. He was unconscious, likely from the pain from his legs. Advancing to the announcer's position, he was holding a note on his hand with some blood on the bottom of it. Goku walked up and grabbed the piece of paper and held it before his face. Turney list the writing was poor and crooked, but the message was conveyed. By this time, the rest of the crew filed and saw the situation. While everyone was crowding around the message, Master Roshi diverted from the norm and went to the center of the room, where there was another piece of a paper by its lonesome. When he picked it up, his face changed from suspicion to horrified. It can't be. Instantly, everyone's attention turned towards Roshi and looked at the strange paper that he was holding. Bomber was the one to speak up on Roshi's strange reaction. What's with you old pervert? All it is is a devil symbol with a circle in the middle. For all we know it could some random zoomer or something pulling a prank. Roshi completely refuted Bomber's attempt at trying to be witty with a grim statement. No this is something far worse than a zoomer. This is the crest of the devil emperor. Piccolo, Piccolo, what does he kill us with a horrible high-pitched screech? Sounds like a pansy to me. Oolong tried to make light of the situation. As usual, no one paid attention to the side character, nay, background character. I've heard of this devil emperor Piccolo before. He once submerged the world in flames a long time ago with his iron fist. Yes, long ago. My master fought him along with me and Shen. Even with all of our power combined, we couldn't defeat him. So my master sealed him inside a jar, and I toss him in the bottom of the ocean. There shouldn't be a way for him to return after my master used his life to stop his tyranny. Sir, so are we able to stop him? Krillin was literally shivering in fear. We aren't powerful enough, but we have two choices. The Dragon Balls and Roshi turned to Goku with a complicated expression. You, Goku, you have far exceeded my expectation and our only hope with the power you possess. I learned this from my master Korin, and I think with your lineage, you might be able to acquire it. What is this thing that you want Goku to get? 
It sounds like it will hurt him. Chichi started to get a really bad feeling from this situation. Roshi and Goku stared at for a second. Roshi nodded and Goku got the message. He went through the front door, but not before hauling the announcer over his shoulder. Calling his flying Nimbus he jumped up and grabbed onto the edge before blasting off. Everyone rushed towards him to see what he was doing. All they got was a glimpse of his tail and a yellow trail to boot. Bomber waited no time and stomped back to Roshi to demand answers. Grabbing him by the shirt, it didn't matter if he was the greatest martial artist in the world or Usain Bolt. He wasn't going to escape. What did you send him to do? You wrinkly old bastard, if you don't tell right now you'll not be able to see women the same anymore when you become one. Roshi didn't flinch nor retaliate, only stating facts. He is our only hope if a wish granting dragon doesn't work. We can always wish him back with that same reality bending power. Tears started to well up in her eyes at the implication. She stormed off while speed dialing someone. Right when she entered the sidewalk, a helicopter came in from out of nowhere and picked her up into the sunset. Now everyone there turned to Master Rushi demanding answers. All he could say was, If you truly are a martial artist, you have to take risks for the greater good. Flying to Corrin's Tower. This is one of the things that Goku has been most apprehensive about. He was literally on his way to drink poison to get stronger. Sounds like something an alcoholic would say. This year was his official year that he has lived as long as his previous life. Soon it would even feel like his previous life was just a strange dream. Shaking his head, he saw Corrin's tower in the distance and landed on the balcony. Bidding farewell to his little cloud. Corrin was just sleeping as all cats do until he heard a loud stomp on his tower. Going outside to give the intruder a piece of his mind, he saw a familiar face greet his all-day nap. Goku, what are you doing here? Master Roshi sent me to increase my strength. He said with my body, I should be able to handle it. Corrin wrinkled his brows. If it was what he is thinking of, this was a serious situation, especially if Roshi sent him. Looking into his mind, he absorbed the entire conversation that occurred moments ago and understood the severity of the situation. Goku placed the announcer on a wall while Corrin left. He went to the back of the room and grabbed a teapot and cup to prepare to give Goku the worst pain in his life. Going back to the main room Corrin could feel Goku's shivers when his eyes laid on the pot. You do know that this is heart-wrenching poison. The worst pain you will ever experience is from this ultra-sacred water. Yeah, I know. Giving him a cup, the only light in his eyes was of pity. What is with the other guy by the way? He seems kinder there dead if it weren't for his breathing. Once Corrin reminded Goku of the guy with the broken legs, he got an idea. Corrin, give me some Senzu beans. Now, quick. Grumbling while going to one of his pots, he reached down and grabbed some beans. Kids these days with no respect. Grabbing one bean, he crushed it with his hands into a paste and force-fed the announcer the green miracle. Suddenly, his legs started to revert back to their original position. Cracks could be heard until he was fully restored to normal position. Corrin's eyes rocketed out of his eyes at the display. He knew that it could heal simple cuts, but broken legs are another story. Taking a deep breath, he pinched his nose and down the drink. Before the pain could start, he started chewing on a senzu bean at the same time. Saying that the experience was painful was the understatement of the year, and no amount of healing could help that. The original purpose of the sacred water was to dig deep into your body to find your potential and unlock it. Only those with extremely durable bodies could take the strain of the process and live to see another day. The senzu bean was not helping at all with reducing the pain and arguably increasing it. Instead of leaving a destructive path in its wake for the body to heal slowly later, the senzu bean is forcing the body to heal, giving Goku a brief moment of respite before it attacks him again. It's like experiencing scorching hot water only for it be cooled down before scorching yourself again every second. Continuous pain is much more wanted. While Goku was going through a very painful process to get stronger, the rest of the crew void Bulma headed off to the Dragon Balls. Bulma had the foresight to pass the Chichi the Dragon Radar, indicating for her to get the Dragon Balls back at Capsule Core. This was the only reason why she also didn't run off with Bulma to check on Goku. She had to keep Plan A afloat. They all flew back in a mini jet that Bulma had called for them. The helicopter was already close to the island, letting her take a quick departure, while the jet took half an hour. Scrambling in, they couldn't help feeling anxious about the up-and-coming events and Goku's safety. Master Roshi, in particular, had an incredible amount of lumps on his head when he told the truth of what Goku was getting himself into. 
The mini jet was fast getting crew from the island to capsule core. When it came into view, smoke was being emitted from a giant hole on the side of the building. Another break-in. You would think that there would be better countermeasures at this point. They parked the jet right next to it, and Chichi was followed by the rest to see what had happened. Standing there above Dr. Briefs and a steel suitcase was a green monster with wings sprouted behind his back. Luckily, Dr. Briefs didn't look too hurt when they arrived attracting the monster's attention. Look at who we have here. More worthless humans who have stopped my amusement. Brief stood up and slowly backed away, but Tambourine didn't pay any more attention to the weakling. Although their power was weaker than his, he felt some semblance of a threat. Let's see if you can provide me with some to form of amusement to make up for it. Bomber's helicopter pilot saw a huge tower in the distance. Miss Briefs, is that the one? Looking up in the huge tower, she could really only say one thing. It better be. Is this Piccolo? All of the vulnerable people stayed behind letting the fighters take the floor. Krillin, Yamcha, Chen, Chatsu, and Roshi circled the smirking demon. This isn't what I remember him looking like. This is most likely a minion of his. Even if it is his minion, you mustn't underestimate the might that he carries. We won't lose to his pet. They were raring to go, to make sure that this demon won't rule the world. They were willing to sacrifice their life. You seem like you know about me and my master. I will grace your death with his honor. Be grateful. With that, he made his way to his first target which was Yancha. He observed them for a little, and was able to locate the weak link in the pack. Yamcha was ready for him not risking his life for a second. Wolf Fang Fist, his signature move, was aimed at the condescending grin. He didn't get far until the monster fist was lodged into his gut. He was standing over Yamcha in a very relaxed position. Racing his claws to impale his back, he was stopped barely by an invisible force. Looking over in the direction that it was coming from, a flying psychic was closing his eyes in concentration. Veins were sprouting from his head from the strain. Before he could think of a counter-attack, he was launched from an impact to the side of his head. Flying through the building, he tried to stabilize himself with his wings, before Krillin and Roshi finished the combo that Chen set for them, by hitting tambourines back at the same time. He crashed into the sturdy wall with dust flying everywhere. Chen spat in the direction of the demon to taunt it. You don't seem too tough, with all of us here you will meet your doom. Tambourine grunted in response. Chen was no doubt his biggest threat, but if he could just isolate him by quickly killing the others, then he might have a chance. Going to the second weakest link, Krillin. He already had Chiaotzu and Roshi backing him up after they realized the monster's strategy. Pinched between a rock and a hard place, he didn't know what else to do. You strong martial artists don't have to kill me. We have reformed from our evil ways I promise. They offered us a cake to join the good side, and we accepted. The cake is a lie. Don't listen to him. He needs to be terminated before he can bring doom to us all. The five fighters started to charge their beam techniques in order to ensure the demon's demise not caring at all about the damage that it will entail to the infrastructure. Bulma was rich after all. Sweat started to pour down his face when he felt the disturbance and abundance of Kai that was being gathered. He put a hand out for each group that was aiming at him and pushed out his own Kai to give him time to save himself. Kamiha Miha, Doden Ray, beams clashed. But it was foreseeable who would win. The combined beams were right upon the demon's hands ready to erase him into ash. You will not be able to stop the advent of my master. With that, the beams collided and exploded with its prey in the middle. Overkill was not in the dictionary for these people, as one misstep could very well lead to world domination. This is the end of the line, miss. We can't go any higher. The altitude is too high for this helicopter. Damn it. How long is this tower? They were climbing in altitude for so long, and they have yet to see the top. Bomber pulled out the hoverbike that she had stored in the back of the helicopter, and flew out the opening. Bomber upgraded the bike to keep up with the flying Nimbus. It was able to stick to the pole and slowly ascend. This was the reason why she didn't bring it out in the first place. Hoke! Eep! There was a green ugly monster sitting on a throne inside of a flying airship. He was incredibly wrinkly from age, making him look like a prune. The idiot trio was below next to his feet. When he started to act strangely, they yelled in surprise, and probably peed themselves at the sudden noise. There was a tridactyl type monster being annoying with its high-pitched voice. It was a wonder why he was still there serving no use. Master, what happened? T-Tambourine has perished. 
Who could have killed him? I, I knew it. It is probably that Goku kid who could have possibly be strong enough to kill him. That is why all the Dragon Balls are already collected except for one. Goku, huh? Set the course to those Dragon Balls. I shall terminate this Goku once and for all before he becomes a problem to my regime. No problem, sir. Pilif, the person who wanted to have some sort of power so bad that he lowered himself to be someone else's bitch, ran to the terminal and charted a course to Capsule Corporation. It didn't take too much longer for Bulma to reach the top. After driving for an hour, she finally saw a huge building on top of the tower, and got excited that her trip was finally coming to an end. Seeing that there was no way for her to actually bring the bike with her, she jumped off and let the bike fly down without its owner. Climbing up, she proceeded forward and up the stairs to the balcony. It was there that she suddenly faced a face with a frizzly cat and cane. Um, meow. Although Goku told her about his adventure to Corrin's tower, he never actually said that Corrin could talk. I can talk you, stupid human. Seeing the angry cat fuss over practically nothing was amusing to watch. Totally worth it. Calming down a little bit, Corrin peered into Bulma's mind as she was trying to search for something. Seeing her intention and the way that she traveled her made him understand her transparent urgency. Corrin pointed toward a room that was adjacent to the main building and spoke to the distressed girl. What you seek is over there. Heading over, she entered the room to see two beds. One had the announcer that Goku took for some reason. He was sitting on his bed looking over at Goku, who was sweating a flood on his bed with occasional whimpers. Bulma didn't even notice that the announcer's legs were magically fixed and headed over to Goku. Goku. The announcer was startled at the young girl's arrival but kept quiet about the matter after seeing her concern. He has been in this state for at least several hours. Apparently, I was saved by him after my legs were broken from that demon. When I awakened, he was already like this. Bomba finally noticed the notable side character with his healed legs. What kind of science is this? Your legs were broken just earlier today. There was no science on Earth currently that was able to heal broken legs in hours like so. From what I am told, apparently it's not science, but magic. Master Corrin told me that Goku gave me one of his green beans, and I was able to heal my injuries. They had just found out about it and gave it to me to save my legs. A bean that is able to heal injuries. This is life-changing. Wait, why don't you give it Goku then? Don't you see he is in all this pain? What is causing it? Bulma was talking so fast it was hard to keep track of her words. The announcer got flustered at all the questioning, but was luckily saved by Corrin. He is experiencing the Ultra Divine Water. The liquid is extremely poisonous. But if you are able to survive the trial then you will receive a great boost in strength. He himself dosed himself with a Senzu Bean. And it did not work too well. In fact, it made his pain intense in the beginning and mild in the middle. Nothing can stop the trial set by the water. Bulma stared at Goku's pained expression with her own. It was torturous to see him experiencing hardship without her being able to do anything about it. She was in for a surprise as that was the exact moment that he suddenly opened making her jump. Ah, whack. Goku, unfortunately, woke up from his nightmarish hell with a headache and bumped to boot. Not letting the annoyed Bulma and scared announcer get his mood down, he was feeling stronger than ever. Even with his gravity training, the water still boosted his strength tremendously. No pain, no gain. Let's hurry Goku, the others went for the Dragon Balls at my house. We need to rendezvous and come up with a plan. Did you say Dragon Balls? Um, yes. At your house. Um, why yes? But that is not the Poi Dash. Why didn't you tell me? Goku rushed out with the announcer and Bulma on each hand. Jumping off the platform, he called out for his trusty ride. Flying Nimbus. The little cloud swooped them off their feet. This the two that was dragged to be dangled from the side. Goku that hurt. Why did you do that? I just wanted the Dragon Balls to be a secret. I wasn't going to wish for anything that important. You ug. Those are wish-granting mystical balls that have been around for centuries. Piccolo could have known about them and could be on the his way to them right now. Everyone is in danger. Ah, shit. Well, that was easier than I thought. Yamcha was looking over the ash in the middle of the room as everyone helped Dr. Briefs and his robots fix his house. Krillin opened the suitcase to find six dazzling Dragon Balls, neatly placed in their respective holder. There was only one missing which was Goku's final ball. They were after the Dragon Balls. This is bad, they know about the power that it holds. Wait, how did they know that they were here? Krillin turned to Chichi, who was looking no less than guilty, 
that the revelation that they were collecting the Dragon Balls was out. Her and Bulma were only supposed to make the wish pretend they never had them in the first place. No matter how stupid their wish was, are we well Bulma and I were collecting them. I don't know no why they knew where they were. Bulma has the Dragon Ball radar with her right now. Radar. The only other people that have a radar are the RR army. But they went extinct, and Pilaf is too incompetent to have Piccolo as a minion. Wait, that doesn't matter. The fact that they have a radar makes this place a target. We have to leave this place before it gets blasted into oblivion. Finally, that cue ball was worth something as he snapped everyone to become more alert. They all said bye to Dr. Briefs after fixing his house and boarded the jet to bring the fight somewhere else. Taking off into the sky, they plotted their course for the final battle. We can go to the Diablo Desert. It is pretty deserted if you catch my drift. Before anyone could L-A-U-G-H cringe. At his joke, the jet rocketed out of control. Tien tried to bring it back to his control with his totally expert flying capabilities. The ship went crashing down in minutes. Everyone crawled out of the wreck that was lodged into the middle of the street. Cars were honking and pedestrians were scattering. Everyone at the same time looked up when a shadow loomed over them. A giant ship that loomed over them like there were ants. The pressure alone spelled doom in all caps. A big airship with the word pillif sewed across the length of it to really show who it belonged to. Piccolo flew down from the balcony of a ship with his cape fluttering behind him as majestic as possible considering the circumstances. The Zed fighters were as ready as they could be to face the Demon King. Chaos was ensuing around them, but it did not take their eyes away from the descending doomsday. Well, well, well look who we have here. A bunch of humans who think they could defy their emperor. I won't be denied my birthright like last time. We will stop you, again and again, no matter how many times it takes. They were standing in front of the old emperor in a line. The terror that was going around them was just a sample of what was to come. If they didn't stop this emotionless creature, the waves of power that rolled off of him weren't one of extreme power but extreme evil integrated with it. Master Roshi did not have his hopes up, he couldn't execute his trusty technique, so all he could put his hopes in was this fight, or that Goku would hurry up. Let's start the massacre. Piccolo took off breaking the ground completely under his feet to his standing opposition. Krillin and Yamcha bolted to intercept him, while Chen and Chaozu flew up above them. The contrast of strength was apparent from the get-go. Krillin threw a punch at Piccolo's ugly mug. But his short arms didn't go far before it was stopped. Piccolo snapped Krillin's foot with just one sweep to it, and finished him off with a clean punch to the face, making him crash into an abandoned car. Yamcha tried his best to support his friend with his wolf fang fist. But everything was either dodged or half-heartedly blocked by wrists. He defeated the bandit easily by grabbing his face and slammed it on the road. Yancha has gone limp instantly after shoving his face full of asphalt. Piccolo was still kneeling down when a blast came from above. Looking up, he saw two frightened fighters pointing their finger with smoke coming out of them. The blast was actually a combined assault from both of their Doden rays. His back was now smoking profusely, but he paid no mind. Throwing his cape away that had a hole in it, he felt freer to beat up these worthless insects to submission. Preparing to yoink the two from the air, he was suddenly smashed in the face in what felt like an airplane on steroids. Wiping a little dirt off his face, he looked up from the inside of a shadow to see an extremely buff Roshi towering over him. Not wasting any time, Roshi kept the chase on while Chen and Xiaotzu could come up with a plan. Xiaotzu, you distract him on my signal. It doesn't have to be long, but enough to hold him in place. Tian had a serious expression plastered on his face after overlooking the battlefield. Krillin and Yamcha were instantly defeated, while Roshi is barely holding on with his superior strength. You don't mean with a shocked face, Chaozu reluctantly agreed after figuring out what Chen's plan was. Closing his eyes, he focused all his Kai into his hands. Bringing them together the large amount that he is forcing in the open was making him woozy. He never really got a real rest from the tourney to the battle, so he didn't fully recover his Kai. His eyes were getting blurry, but he pressed on because he knew if he didn't his life would end anyways. Pulling his hands apart, the electrifying Kai sparked in front of him to execute his final move. He was about to make the hand gesture and signal Chiaotzu before he saw a 10-ton hunk of meat whirl his way to him. He couldn't move out of the way because he was in the middle of the process, while Chaozu's telekinesis was too weak to move him. When Roshi crashed into Chen, his hands lost control of the Kai stream, and consequently blew up in their faces. With that, Roshi and Chen plummeted to the ground, leaving a shocked Chaozu to fend for himself. That last man gave me a fright, 
but I guess his speed was so slow, or he was just too old to keep up with me. Poor humans and your limited time on this planet. I will rule it for eternity in your stead. Stopping himself from looking at his defeated friends, he looked in front of him, where the voice was coming from to see Piccolo staring right back. Shiatsu didn't have time to scream as Piccolo grabbed him by the neck and slowly floated down. You will never defeat me. After I attain all the Dragon Balls, I will rule this world and drive it to the right path. Anarchy, theft, murder, rape are all going to be on my good list. And if you do all three, I might even spare when I want to randomly kill someone. You and your weak friends had a good run, but with the death of all these people, no one will be strong enough to oppose me. Some people stayed behind to witness the large spectacle with a respectable distance. They were quaking in their boots, and some were weeping. There was a young boy, of course, using his ephon and recorded the whole evil villain spiel and footage to the epic battle with the hero's defeat. No one could move out of fear and the dread of what was to come. Shiatsu was struggling to breathe as his windpipe was slowly being crushed. He got ready for the final act. I mean, if you are going to go out, do it with a bang. Literally, his body started to glow. But all that incited from the demon was more amusement, coupled with a faster constricting grasp. Shiatsu couldn't take it anymore, and black out from the pain and shock, it was only a matter of time before he was going to close his eyes forever. Bonk. A loud clap of metal resonated from behind the back of Piccolo. Looking at it, there was a metal boomerang sort of thing that tried but failed to penetrate his skin. Dropping the small pale fighter like a sack of potatoes. He fully turned around the sea determined girl. Shichi witnessed the whole fight and waited for the perfect time to buy more time. She knew that he really couldn't help the whole situation. But if she could buy more time for a certain someone to arrive and save the day then that was worth her life. Slowly walking over to the girl. You can see the fear deeply rooted in her eyes that Piccolo fed on. Smiling evilly at the girl. He knew that just killing her would be such a waste. Reaching his hand at the still girl that shut her eyes, he was almost able to touch her face before a hand reached out and held his wrist. It was small, like a kid's hand, but the grip was strong enough to gain his attention. Piccolo tried to pull Make and get a closer look at the presumptuous person that dared touch him be he couldn't move an inch. Not feeling the touch that was supposed to come, Chichi opened her eyes to see something that made everything in this world feel right again. Looks like I came at just the right time. With that opening line, he jerked his hand away taking Piccolo with it. His whole body was suddenly pressed into the asphalt, making an indention of a perfect snow demon. Chichi was so overcome with emotion that she didn't even notice the footsteps that were approaching from behind her. Bulma put a hand on Chichi's shoulder, glad that they made it in time with Goku's intuition. Feeling the warm hand, she instantly knew it was Bulma, and hugged her as tight as she could. Bulma tried to comfort her. But we all know how that would go as. So she just opted to hug back. Looking at the destruction before her, she noticed the downfighters that practically looked like they were dead. Whispering into her ear, Bomber had two before it is too late. We have to help them. After fully riding her emotions and calming them down, Chichi looked up from her comfort shoulder to remember that those guys were just a step from death. Working with some robots, they all hauled the wounded fighters to the Capsule Corporation building to at least make sure they don't die. When they did that, they left a particular blonde man that stood out in the crowd with his clean black suit and greasy hair. Not knowing what to do in this situation, he saw the kid with the phone and did what he did best. It was like a yell from the dark abyss when the snow demon produced an isplitting sound. Jumping up, Piccolo freed himself from the ground and Goku's hand at the same time. Why you? Who are you? This was the first time the Demon King displayed fear. Goku didn't just slam him into the ground, but also broke his hand with it like he was handling a toy. Piccolo's entire back was on fire from the pain, and he used nearly all of his kai to stabilize it and jump back out. The name is Goku, Son Goku. It was the perfect timing as well. Wind blowing ruffling his hair as mysterious music suddenly made him even more badass. Whoa. Everyone was speechless at the sudden turn of events. From total desperation to guaranteed salvation. This is Sun Goku ladies and gentlemen. The world's strongest fighter that defeated the Demon King. The announcer was talking to the small phone like it was a microphone. His voice sounded tired and raspy. But it still has the strong intent that was laced with every word said. Shem PH, this isn't over Sun Goku. I might not have my revenge, but it will come back to you. Gurgling an egg from his throat, his legs started to crumble and visibly turn to ash. All this did was making the egg's veins glow red with power. 
The ash crept his way up at the same pace as the egg was emerging out of the throat. Before it could reach the throat, the egg was fully out. He yeeted the egg like a cannon, while saying one last thing to his son. Avenge me, my son. And with that, the demon king Piccolo vanished with the wind. Goku wanted Piccolo to be born as he knew him in the Og. But this was something different. He would have honestly done nothing when the demon king produced Junior. But he was actually standing still because he was shell-shocked. Goku felt the Kai and life energy inside Piccolo, slowly deplete into the little egg that he created with all his heart. It was no doubt that this Piccolo was stronger than the original, since his dad wasn't on the verge of death this time, and put everything into the egg. No matter, he still shouldn't be a threat. He headed towards the partially crumpled capsule corporation under the watchful eyes of everyone present. Making his way to the lab, he saw Bulma and her dad work furiously to stabilize everyone's health, while Chichi helped around. All of them were barely alive, but alive nonetheless. That means that they will eventually recover with a little help from a certain bean. Hey guys, do you need any help? The two girls left the guys that were mostly on the right path to go up to Goku and ask about the situation. How are you? Did you defeat him? They had both seen the strength Goku obtained compared to Piccolo. But unexpected things happened in droves before. I did, but he sent an egg of some sort. I need to go and ask Corrin if he knows anything about it. Okay, that is good I guess. Looking back at the stabilized guys, Chichi took the chance that was brought to her that was taken last time. Ch hey, let me join you. Bomba and her dad don't really need my help around here, so I am free for a bit. A huge step for Chichi to make. But she made sure to take it before she fell too far behind. Sure, let's go. Goku easily agreed. He was distracted from the implication of what the Namekian had done earlier, and wanted to go to Corrin as fast as possible. They both headed out the front door without another thought, and hopped onto the flying cloud. Ugly wait. Bulma watched the two of them leave with a hand reaching out to them. Before their figures vanished from her sight, she saw Chichi look back at her and pulled down the skin below her eye in a playful manner. Bomber couldn't help but let out a little chuckle and let her go. She needed the time anyways. This was probably just revenge for taking his time earlier. Meanwhile, Hey kid, what are you going to do with that recording? Announcer Sen asked the little boy. I don't know, maybe upload it to YouTube. I might get a few thousands views before it gets taken or something. The kid was picking his nose while watching the video over. The situation was a little too surreal for his brain to handle. How about this? I take the video from your hands, and I will give you a couple of hundred zini in compensation. The little kid was a little startled from the offer. He didn't know that it cost that much. In his opinion, this looked like a very well executed movie shoot if anything else. Sure. Blinded by the money, he agreed too fast to negotiate. Oh, the minds of children. Passing through the air for another long travel to Corinth, Chichi and Goku made some small talk. Chichi was of course as awkward as usual around the boy, even though their height difference has been improving since the day that they met, she still tried her hardest to become closer to her. So you and Bomber got the Dragon Balls. Why do you need them? Goku was very curious. This round of Dragon Balls wasn't too hard to get from what he could recall, but why did the two girls need it? Oh, our adventure was great. We met a whole bunch of new people traveling the world. There was this one guy with a sword, and he was super strong. Chichi tried to avert his attention to another subject much to Goku's ire. She knew that if he knew, he would definitely be against such a weird, stupid, and selfish wish. That is just how he is. He grumbled at the poor execution of ignoring his question. He did the same with Bulma when they were together, but she also avoided talking about it. In the end, he had no choice but to remain ignorant about it. It is not like the two are evil or anything and would wish for something that would harm others. They talked some more while they headed to Corrin's tower. Making a quick pit stop at his house to pick up something, they finally arrived after a long-winded conversation that was extended far too long for its own good. Corrin was standing at the edge seemingly waiting for him to come. Goku, I see that you have come back. Yeah, I defeated King Piccolo, but he sent some sort of weird egg. I was too stunned at the situation to grab it. Do you know what it is? Hum. I did see that he did that. I have an idea, but I think you would have a better chance of going up to the big guy about the situation. The big guy. This was Chichi's first time seeing Corrin, but from what she had heard from Goku, he is the most respected and best martial art teacher currently on his planet. Who could be bigger than him? Who could it be? Well, it is Kami. 
Corrin said everything in a monotone voice, as if he didn't just shatter the girl's worldview. Hey, Kami. No way that he is actually real right. Corrin chuckled at the little girl's response while studying Goku's expression. He made sure to widen his eyes at the appropriate time to make him look shocked, but Corrin was someone hard to fool. There is something weird about this kid, but I don't know what. He looks and acts like it was a surprise but I don't feel the emotion off of him. Let me show you, in fact, his lookout is right above this tower. All we need is something called a power pole, but I don't know where it is. Oh, I have it right here. It was my Grandpa Gohan's weapon before he died. Goku reached for the little staff that he took from his house on his way over here. What a coincidence. Say Goku, I don't remember seeing you with it last time you came here. You didn't even mention it. Chichi was also a little suspicious of his behavior. They had to drop down by his little hut in order to get that, but from what the conversation entailed before, he didn't know about Kami, and the way to get up to his base. Ah, uh, well Baba told me about it when I visited her one time. Yeah, she told me that I would need the power pole for my next step, when I didn't know what to do so I grabbed it at this time. I see. Fortunatilla Baba is indeed a mystical force that would be able to aid you. Corin said that out loud by voice but thought something different in his head. Why would she tell him about it? It is not like it is something that is important enough to warrant her attention. He would have just went out to get it when I told him I needed it. Seeing Chichi and Corin start walking to the top of the platform without any more questions, he breathed a sigh of relief in his mind. Corin would have definitely found out something if his ability to read others' thoughts weren't blocked by Goku's unusual condition. The Force thought that Goku knowing that he would need the power pole in advance was due to future information and therefore blocked Corin's reading upon why he actually got it. Going up, the trio circled around the top of the platform, where a little hole was situated. Corin slotted the staff onto its designated position and looked over to Goku. Take this bell. You will need it for confirmation that you are the chosen one. Hold on to the top and just extend it until you hit the top. I'm sure you can pass the test and receive guidance from Kami. Wait, Goku is going up there to train. Again. They both covered their ears at Chichi's sudden outburst. When are you not going to be training and actually live like a normal person? Well, I... Uh, got to go. Goku knew when to dip as if his life depended on it. Extending the staff, he followed with it at sonic speed. Goku. Chichi was so annoyed at the man's antics. She tried to pull the power pole out of the socket to make him fall out. However, the moment that it started extending, it became immovable to the girl with very little martial art experience. Well, uh, young lady you can ride a flying Nimbus, right? Chichi left with a disgruntled expression on her face. She was only really mad because her time with Goku was cut short, making her go back to the house by herself. From what Corin told her, he will be there for an indefinite amount of time. Apparently, his status doesn't let him privy to the exact date was what Chichi found out after threatening him. Flying through the air on the Nimbus, Chichi easily spotted the broken down capsule corporation, with all the smoke flying through the air. What she didn't expect was all the helicopters and people crowding around it. Usually, there are no people despite the familiarity and popularity of the brand. But this time there were reporters from all over the city. She flew her cloud over the people, and saw a slew of robots and police, keeping the reporters from breaching in. Bulma was in the front of her house, and boy did she not look happy. She did brighten up when she saw Chichi, but was equally confused about why Goku was not with her. Hey Chichi, how was your little trip? Where is Goku anyway? Bulma had to call off the police officer when Chichi landed with a resounding thud. That bastard is going off training again. I don't remember a month where stood in one place. What? Bulma startled everyone in the vicinity with her shout. The reporters, police officers, and even the robots started to think she had a few screws loose. No irony intended. Oh, he is going to get it when he comes back. Wait, wait. Did you get it? Did you get IT Bulma started to shake Chichi like she was a milkshake asking for the item? This time everyone went back to doing what they were doing before ignoring the crazy woman that was in the center of attention. Stop shaking me. Bulma stopped, but didn't let go of the poor girl. Yes, I got it from him, would you calm down? Don't make me regret my decision. Digging something out of her pocket after her friend let her go, she retrieved a smooth orange ball with stars in the middle. I was able to extort Dashkov ask him for it, and he reluctantly Dashkov kindly gave it to me. She presented the item to Bulma who gracefully took it off her hands. Alright, let's do this. 
Wind was blasting on Goku's face as he made the ascent to Kami's lookout. It made him feel kind of weird approaching a god when said god isn't all powerful like he is supposed to be in his original world. The closest real god in this world is probably Zeno, and no one would want a god like Zeno. Seeing the sanctuary above him, he relaxed his muscles that were holding on the extending pole a little. The red stick locked in place returning to its job of connecting the tower and the lookout. Climbing up the ladder that was sticking off to the side, he finally reached the long await top. The view was something else on top of the world. Clouds blocked most of his vision, but the things he did see was amazing. Standing in the pathway before him was a short man with a genie attire on. They were just there staring into each other's eyes very intensely. The genie had the blankest look on his eyes that made shivers go down Goku's spine. Hello. That simple greeting was incredibly bland. Goku could only reply with his own and awkwardly look around the area. I am Mr. Popo, Kami's assistant. You are the one who defeated the demon King Piccolo. You have very impressive strength. Popo's eyes were tracking the wandering Goku without moving. He was like a creepy painting with only his eyes moving. Well, God really has a nice place up here. No wonder he can see everything. Before Goku could walk around the statue that was Mr. Popo, he instantly vanished to reappear before him. Do you have the Corrin's mark of approval? Still smiling, he reached out his hand expectantly at the young boy. Sure. Getting the little bell out of his pocket, he gave it to the genie. Thank you. Now you are ready to take the test. You will fight Mr. Popo. Although he said those ambiguous words, his face and body were the same as before. Okay, little weirded out experiencing this first hand he started the attack on the genie. Since his opponent was right in front of him, he didn't need to move his body to hit him. However, no matter how fast he has gotten over the years, he barely missed him. You are fast and powerful, but that is all you are. Mr. Popo teleported behind him when he said that surprising Goku a little. Mr. Popo stuck out his fist expecting to hit Goku, but was met with another hand. After Goku caught his hand, he flung him away and leap after to continue the chase. Stabilizing himself in the air with his flying technique, he was able to bring out a kick that connects with Goku's side. As he was hit on the side of his face, both separated after landing an attack on each other with wary expressions. Although they both hit each other, Goku obviously did more damage from the scratch that appeared on Popo's body. Compared to Goku's flawless skin, after wiping it once, Mr. Popo had all the experience and skill, while Goku was able to keep up with him in pure power alone. One could only imagine what would happen if Goku achieved both. But if this fight lasted any longer, Mr. Popo will receive an excruciating loss. You have the potential with your little understanding of Kai. Having a strong body like yours will not suffice in your fights. As you can see, we are almost even in capabilities despite the huge gap in physical power. Yes, I acknowledge I can improve. I am nowhere near my limits and don't plan to stop. Goku was truly excited every time he thought of his future and where he was heading. It seems as if this body and universe have no limits. Hey, I like you. You have some spunk. Goku was immediately startled and looked up to the sky god. Once he realized that he is already in the sky, he looked over the palace in the back. I will meet you. Come here. Walking with Mr. Popo, they arrived in front of the large doorway. They waited a little bit before there was a shadow that was nearing them from the entrance. A wrinkly old alien emerged. And he looked exactly like the Demon King expect more refined. What? Goku let out a little yelp from the uncanny resemblance that the two shared. You could even consider them twins in the way that they are separated, but have the same DNA. Calm down. This is not Piccolo but Kami. Mr. Popo mistook Goku's grade A acting with surprise and informed him of the situation. Yes, that is true. Let me tell you about him. Why what happened? Waking up from his peaceful nap, Yancha finds Chen and Master Roshi talking to Bulma and Chichi, with bandages wrapped around them like they were mummies. Looking around, he noticed he is on a bed equipped with medical supplies, and also wrapped with layers of bandages. To his left and right, he sees Krillin and Shao Tzu in their beds still passed out due to exhaustion. Getting up from the bed with a grunt, he attracts the attention of the room as he heads towards the group. Hey what happened? Did we win? What happened to Piccolo? When he asked those questions, Bulma looked visibly annoyed while Chichi looked awkward at their situation. You know what? I am just going to explain everything when everyone wakes up. I can't be bothered with you people. And why are you still wearing those bandages? You should be all healed up already. Yamcha was still in the dark, 
but a whisper from Chen promised him that it will be explained later made him rethink his decision to ask again. Unwrapping themselves from the Gauls, they were delighted to see that all their injuries were back to normal from what felt like a power nap. It was at this time that Krillin woke up and approached them. Receiving a death glare from Bomba and pleading stares from the others, Krillin didn't say anything and just huddled with them. Finally, Xiaotzu woke up with a little more pain than the others. Tian went to help him up and guided him to everyone else. Now that everyone is awake let me explain the situation. All of you guys absolutely got destroyed. No questions asked. You were all going to die from the gap of strength that was shown. Luckily, before anyone could, Goku and I arrived to save your sorry asses. Goku then defeated Piccolo, but Piccolo shot an egg out before he died. So right now Goku went to Corrin's tower to ask him about what that egg was about. Now let Chichi explain the rest. Tien and Roshi already heard this part, but the next is new to everyone present even Bulma. Well, when we arrived at the tower, Corrin redirected Goku to go to Kami. So we all went to the top of the tower dash wait. I have to stop you there. Did you say Kami? We all know that God isn't real, right guys? Oh, no, Kami is indeed real. And if it is Goku that we are talking about, I believe that he is the only one worthy of Kami's guidance. Everyone listened to the story in wonder that God was alive, or even existed for that matter. Anyways, we went to the top of the tower, and Goku put his power pole on it. He then extended it and left me. Corrin says that he is probably going to be training up with Kami for the next couple of years. To add to her complaining, she pouted a little at the situation. Kami. Interesting. I cannot fall behind him the next time we fight. I will train my hardest and catch up. Bomber. Do you have any more of those gravity belt contraptions? Those. Yeah. I made a couple on my time off. Easy to put together once you have the blueprints. Instead of answering the fiery Chen, all the martial artists in the room just go more fired up. A not-so-short explanation later, Goku learned of Kami and his past all over again. It was kind of soothing to listen to the wise and old man to talk, so he didn't mind. Anyways, Piccolo didn't have much life energy inside him when he was defeated by you. So he converted every bit of himself to the egg that he shot out. Inside that egg is a clone of Piccolo that has an indefinite potential that it will unleash in this world. I suggest you stay here and learn a way to control your Kai. And observe your environment to go with your already strong body. Sure Kami. I just want to ask, how long will the training be? As much as he wanted to hone his Kai that will help him in the future. The faster he learns this, the faster he will be able to go back to gravity training. I am unsure. It depends on your learning rate. I want to end it in around three years when the World Martial Arts Tournament begins. Piccolo will most likely take his stand there in front of the world. Hum, okay. Let's start then. Bulma was relaxing on the beach in her reclining chair. The sun was beating down on her slightly pale skin and reflecting off of her dark sunglasses. Yawning and stretching a bit, she fully accentuated her body for everyone to see. She was just wearing a plain blue two-piece bikini with white stripes that was a little tight around the edges. Strangely, looking around there was no one around. The sun's steady heat, the calm breeze that was ruffling the sun hat on her head, the strange blue drink on the counter next to her. No one was there to enjoy these luxuries. But her, she was just laying there with no care in the world until the illusion was broken when a door suddenly appeared randomly next to her. Coming out of that door was a Dr. Briefs with two of those strange blue drinks. It's only a week left until the next martial arts tournament, the predicted time Goku will come back. Dr. Briefs was only striking this type of conversation because he knew how much that boy meant to Bulma. It indeed has been three years since Goku tripped to heaven, and not much has changed in regards to life. Tien, Shiaotsu, Krillin, and Yamcha have returned their gravity belts just now. They said that they came from someone named Corrin's, and will spend the rest of their training fine-tuning and adjusting to their strength. Bulma didn't seem to have heard her dad as she just kept staring at the artificial sunset. Chichi went on a flight to visit her dad and the new castle that they built with some of Bulma's help. So it was only Bulma and her parents in Capsule Corporation as of right now. Your mother and I will be going off to vacation for a few weeks. Eat well and take care of yourself. With that parting note, he stood standing there for a few extra seconds before promptly leaving the girl to her own devices. Life was going as smoothly as it was for Bulma since Goku has left. Hanging out with Chichi, building inventions with her dad, finishing high school and blitzing through college, all of it was sort of a routine in her life. The only thing missing was a short, outgoing, boy, that could do impossible things to spice her life up, for better or for worse. 
Bulma didn't know long she lay there thinking about various things, until she heard the doorbell ring from her room. A little tick mark erupted from her head from the sudden intrusion that interrupted her thoughts. What in the world? Dad probably forgot his keys on the shelf again. He should know that I am trying to relax right now. Their front door did have facial recognition installed and ready to use, but it did take a few seconds to scan and approve a face. They still had to fine tweak it a little, but what it wasted in time made up for in 100% accuracy. Bulma turned off the 4D projection, making the surreal beach convert back into her bedroom, and headed down to the kitchen. When she made it there, looking around, she didn't find her dad's keys anywhere in the usual spots he forgets them. Looking around a little bit more, she was starting to give up until another ring resounded throughout the house. Really getting mad now, she hurriedly went to the to give her dad a piece of her mind. Why couldn't he just waste a few seconds scanning his face? Unlocking the front door with gusto, she slammed the door open. What did I tell you old geezer? Stop leaving your keys behind. Bomber started her spiel even before the front door fully opened. She looked down a little where her eyes would usually meet her father's short stature. Instead, all she got was a face full of pure abs covered by a thin sheet of black. Goku had finished his training with Kami earlier than he thought, so he swung by Bomber's to see what has been up. He got a little impatient at the door when it wasn't answered for a bit but when it did he was in for some yelling. With the contents of her yelling, he figured to just let her go on until she realized who it was. When she stopped yelling, she didn't say another word of acknowledgement or whatever. He opened his eyes to his bomber's eyes drooping a little downward with a little drool coming out of her mouth. Snickering at what she was looking at and remembering scenes in the Anime, he couldn't help but tease his old friend. Like what you see, I always knew you were a pervert like Master Roshi. Goku's voice came like bells in Bulma's mind, frightening her enough for her to jump up in astonishment. Seeing the snickering Goku, her face got as bright as a tomato. She tried to cover her face and speak something out, so that Goku wouldn't think of her as more of a freak. E.g. Goku. W, what are you D doing here? I thought you were T-training. Oh, you know, was just in the neighborhood and thought I should drop by. What's wrong I can't see your face? Goku walked inside the house closing the door behind him. He pulled Bomber's hands down by her arms only for her to turn her head 90 degrees in response. Not being able to hold it any longer, he started to laugh his heart out with tears threatening to burst out. Bulma's embarrassment went haywire when she heard his laugh, and all she wanted from him was to stop. Stop. It's not funny you big idiot. Why did you come in here without telling me first? Bulma hit the hunched over Goku that seemed like he was dying from the sounds he was making. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was just too funny. I came by before the tournament to see how you and Chichi were doing. Speaking of Chichi, where is she? Goku was trying to catch his breath much to Bulma's ire, as she explained that Chichi was at her dad's castle, and will meet up with them right before the tourney. Ah, then I guess we are alone then, huh? At least I think so if your yelling from before didn't clue me in. And just like that Bulma's face turned red as she squeaked out a yes. It's been three days since Goku surprised Bulma with his sudden walk-in. They were both in the kitchen working together to make something edible. Goku suggested that he tried to make something that Kami had taught him, and Bulma offered her help. Looking over at Goku with the side of her eye, she still couldn't believe how much he has grown. Just three years ago, he was half her height with enough baby fat to drown a seal. Now he is a hunk of 5'9 of pure hotness that made Bulma have butterflies whenever she was around. She felt she was a teenager all over again. Hey, can you pass me the pepper? Bulma expertly avoided eye contact when he looked over and reached for the pepper in the cabinet. Adding the finishing touches to the meal, he plated the food and the two went to the dinner table to enjoy the exotic dish. Shoving the meat that was coated in a strange sauce in her mouth, it melted on touch and burst out with flavor throughout her mouth. She couldn't help but really fall harder the man across from her from that bite. After all, who wouldn't like a man who can cook? Hey Goku, yeah. Can you come into my room later tonight? I need to tell you something. Okay. That brief conversation was all they had before they both separated to do their own thing. It wasn't long before the designated time for Goku to show up approached. Standing before her doorway, Goku was extremely nervous about what he felt like no reason. She is probably going to tell me about what she wished for with the Dragon Balls or something. Knocking on the door twice, he heard a soft voice come from inside. Come in. Entering the room. He saw Bomber sitting at the edge of her bed with only a nightgown on that one was able to see through. 
I'm modest about showing her plain black undergarments. She patted the spot next to her for Goku to sit. Goku, while trying his hardest not look at Bulma's voluptuous body, he awkwardly sat down on the seat offered. So what do you want to talk about? Bulma had the resolve to confess her feeling tonight. It was now or never. He obviously had a reaction from her gown, so that was a boost to her confidence. Only, she didn't know where to start. Um, so did you think about us at all when you were in heaven? Balma was very interested in looking at a piece of her hair that dripped down in front of her face. Her hairstyle was Goku already told her about his trip to heaven and some of his training. God damn it Balma, why did you say that? Oh, uh, yeah, I was always thinking about everyone up there. It was pretty boring just training all the time and stuff. I dash Bulma watched Goku go into his own world in explaining more about his training. It's as if he didn't think of anything but getting stronger. Kami actually told a joke while wow. Bulma jumped on the unsuspecting Saiyan and pinned him on the bed. Goku could easily overpower the young girl but he waited for what she had to say that led them to this position. However, he definitely did not expect what happened next. You talk too much. And with that, she aligned her face with his and went in for the kiss. When their lips touched, Goku's eyes were wide as saucers, no doubt confused about the situation he was in. He started to think about what was going, but his attention was quickly diverted to how soft the lips pressing against him were. Closing his eyes, he immersed himself and started to kiss back as best he could. Balma was pleasantly surprised and really started to crank the intensity. At first, she was nervous that she would get thrown off and questioned. But now it was just a fierce competition on who was the best kisser. This went on for 20 minutes of back and forth, with short breaks in between, before Goku finally thought that they should talk about what is happening. Separating himself from her, he stopped the advancing lips so he could speak. Abu, what was that? I, I mean it's not that I didn't like it but you like me. Blushing at the confrontation, she could only pour her heart out at this point. You idiot of course I like you. I have for a while. You just haven't noticed it because we're so focused on training for a long while. Goku was truly shocked that Bulma could even like him as Goku or as Chris. He knew that he probably was going to make his move on Chichi if she didn't to spawn Gohan and Goten. But he was thrown a curveball to the head instead. Chichi is cute herself with all the womanly charm that she slowly built up. But Bomber is the male fantasy of hotness that captures you when you first see her, especially in person. I see. Um, then do you want to continue? Seeing her nod her head and lean in for another kiss. Goku had to let one go for another. Bye, Chichi. Guess I am ending up with Bomber. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.